Welcome, watchers of the Drowned Isles, to another episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles. Our little homebrew D&D session here in which uh, these intrepid players ruin all of my wonderful plans, which is great. It's awesome. It's the way it's supposed to be. After all, it's D&D. Uh, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, the uh, host and uh, chief instigator for this particular little game. Uh, we do have our regular set of players here going around the table. I'm Marie. I play Elzara the Druid, and uh, I am Maria Nakimi on YouTube in the comments. I like commenting on stuff and checking what you guys are saying. And we should mention the new page. Yes, uh, and I also am running a page. It's just called Legend of the Drowned Isles, and it is um, you can find it through the Watchers of the Drowned Isles uh, Facebook group. And that's an open page for everybody to see what's going on, to start yep. in, join in. B basically to let you guys know what we're up to. Cool. Hi, uh, I'm Jody. I play Clark, the uh, half-orc fighter rogue, and uh, he's recovering from a recent battle in a jungle. Hmm. Uh, I'm Pat. I play Emran Alisar, uh, social justice cleric. He frees people and makes people happy and such. Freeze or freeze? You can do either one, really. <laughs> you do like the, uh, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the good old rare frost. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nax, and I play Zakis, half elf wizard. Apparently, he's comatose now. I was uh, not present here in the last session. Not comatose in real life, but just not here. So indeed, we had um, a uh, consequence of some of the previous action, just to catch people up and remind people what happened a little bit here. Um, with Zakis drawn low by his exposure to the egg, the group lo learned that a void existed in the Hama, a place where the Vespari could not go, that might have answers to controlling the Hama, perhaps rescuing their friend from ill. Leaving Shank to watch over Zakis, because her armor also seems to react to the Hama, and uh, the rest are taken near the void they see for, from the distance as a standing cloud. Standing, whirling wind, really. The group discovered that the heart of the void was an, was an old tower surrounding by these swirling winds. Inside, they found a booby-trapped tower, the remnants of the Tower of Awaz, as well as others who appeared to be raiding the tower. The large berserker hobgoblin that was once a prisoner of the Vespari and the tiefling in the hobgoblin's crew. Joining the battle on behalf of the tower appeared to be an elemental-powered by the storm around the tower itself, and two suits of animated armor, one larger and crackling with lightning. After the battle, from which the tiefling managed to escape, the group discovered what the others had been looking for, a strange, heavy metal device resembling a spear with spouts and handles, carved with runes of power, containing dust. When the air elemental was destroyed, the storm around the tower fell, and the tower seemed to lose its strength and get destroyed. Standing now in the dust and rubble around the tower, you start to retreat back into the jungle. You Close also have been able... Hmm? Towers one, zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've also noticed that the sound had returned to the area. That was something you noticed around the tower. It was very, very quiet. As well as that familiar sensation of the hum flowing over you once more. For uh, Clark and Iroh, it also is a relief as you feel the hum, filling that void that you had been feeling ever since you stepped near the tower. You had become exhausted when stepping out of the main uh, force of the hum. That now has passed, so that you're no longer exhausted. Um, looking around, you'd not found any leftovers, if you will, of the large hobgoblin who had, been, who had leaped off of, which is a generous way of saying fell off of, the upper balcony and then got whisked away into the wind, thrown somewhere out into the woods. As you feel the hum return, you also hear somewhat the sounds of droning wings, the familiar sound of the Vespari who dropped you off, hovering nearby, but not still yet to travel into where the void had been. The Vespari come closer. These are the insect-headed ones and cannot speak. What do you do? I believe I'm still an air elemental. I don't think I left my form. I so believe that's true. I do nothing. I just... Do the wave. <laughs> or, or, or the wind. All right. 
I want to go over to Clark. They're probably not going to listen to me. Uh, all right. I believe Iroh and Paul were pretty badly wounded after that battle, yeah. too. Uh, well, yeah. Iroh's got 19. Paul had, Paul had like eight. eight. Uh, well... Yeah, after uh, the running out, I will cast... Uh, I could do a mass cure wounds. For some reason, I wanted to save that level 5 slot. You'll uh, remember why after you use it. Uh, that was why, uh, for if anyone died. Yeah... Still, still like a possibility. There, there was something else that I was thinking of too. Clark will wave down the Vespari. Okay. Uh, they respond to you um, and kind of move closer, cautiously still, um, as you can see, and you feel it too. The hum is not fully returned to this area, but it is slowly, kind of like a, a slowly warming stove. Uh, you can sense the heat is there, but you can still touch the stove. It's not that hot yet. Um, but they do kind of flitter down closer to you. There's about uh, ten of them at this point, and as you recall, I seem to recall you were carried out by them. Uh, mm. Multiple. Um, we had to we had to bring the centaur with us. So right. We hiked. Right. Oh, you did hike. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to remember what happened yeah. there. Um, but if we have wounded. But they seem to have more than before. Uh, um, perhaps expecting that they might have to carry the centaur. Right. I'm going to cast a level four uh, healing word, or mass healing word on uh, everyone. Okay. So six, it should be 15 hit points each. You speak the word and it um, resonates from the trees yeah, around Yeah, except you. for you. I mean, I'm at 86 so of 90 15. of my air yep. elemental, so I'm good. <laughs> As the swirling blue wind kind of crests around each of you, and you feel somewhat better. Swirling mist envelops them. Uh, a distant sound of thunder. I'll uh, ask if they can show us the way back to the hive. Um, there is a, a moment where you get the impression that there is consensus building among them. Right. Um, make a perception check. Sure. 21. 21? It's strange, but as you breathe in, you can taste or smell somewhere between the two of those. The sense being given off by them. There's nervousness uh, and concern, but there is consensus building. Mm -hmm. And the ten of them fly up into the trees ahead of you. Mm -hmm. It seems to be in a particular direction. Uh, our patrons seem uneasy. Mm, let's follow them. Mm. I am somewhat uneasy. You okay. said they were, there's no more exhaustion, right? For them. For them. What yeah. about for Paul? Uh, for Paul as well. Uh, yes, because Paul was also affected by the home. I think we should trek after them. Yep. Okay. Let's go. I nod. <laughs> we don't see. <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, it's getting on to be uh, past midday, and the canopy of the trees overhead is still thick, uh, so it's much dimmer inside than it would be uh, for midday anywhere else. The Vespari keep ahead of you, um, always trying to keep a few more, um, and kind of again, from the scent you get that sometimes they come closer, um, there is a strategy. Um, they are wary of the forest, which seems strange because this is their home. Um. Considering that we've cut our way here, mm -hmm. should be an easier time getting back the way we came. Should be. That's but you the hope. Do see that there's a lot of vegetation that seems to have grown back. Mm -hmm. This island is very, very verdant. Um, you see that there are, and it's strange because you start to notice patterns that you would have trained with as a, as a soldier, mm -hmm. um, where some of them are going ahead as a scout and kind of branching out a little bit further. And then they seem to be rotating with some of the ones at the back who are kind of, in a way, reporting back. They've seen nothing, or they don't seem to have okay. seen anything. Um, but they seem inordinately nervous. 
Iroh seems to pick up on it as well and is gripping her glaive, looking around to see if there's anything that she can see. After... I'm firing rays of frost to clear the way. Okay. And make things slightly cooler as we brush up against it. Um, all right. Uh, it actually doesn't help all that much um, because the vegetation kind of gets frozen in place mm. and it's actually harder to move through. Um, then I start doing it on the side so we can brush up against it as we go through the stuff that's not frozen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, everyone make a perception check. Um, at advantage for uh, uh, Amrun. Thirteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Paul has what's his perception? Paul has fifteen. Fifteen. Mm. Arrow's got ten. Okay. Um Your air element of form lasts for quite a while. Five not? hours. Yeah. So you're still maintaining that form. Yeah. For you it's not so difficult to move through because you can literally I move hover. around everything. <laughs> well you can also move around and through yeah. the branches as well. As you do, um, you note that there is a tension, uh, an almost palpable tension in the forest itself, uh, an anticipation. And you see a bit of movement off far to the left. Um, you've heard animals consistently, you've heard the calls of smaller monkeys, you've heard the, the uh, chirping and the, and the calling of birds. There have been some small animals moving across the forest floor. Uh, even he occasionally hearing the, the grunting of a wild boar off in the distance. But this seems to be about, if you were to estimate, maybe three or four feet tall, bigger than most of the things you've seen so far. Small movement, though, not a huge amount. Um, I stop and point. Okay. I go like this. Uh... <laughs> Clark would like to try to interpret uh, <laughs> the wind dance. Um, it's a pretty straightforward gesture, okay. so I'm going to allow a pretty straightforward interpretation. All right, so that away. The elemental is pointing off in a different direction, about right. pretty much perpendicular to the path you're traveling. And then going. Quietly mention to my compatriots to look off to the left. Oh. Okay. Um, Clark will keep looking. Seems to, to the be right. seems to be deep forest right. for those who look off to the left. Um, there are the quivering of a few leaves. Um, the air gets a little cooler, in fact, and you start to hear the sounds of raindrops hitting the upper canopy, slowly filtering down, causing a tremendous amount of motion as all the leaves start to capture and catch the rain. But nothing visible off to the left. Off to the right, make a perception check. Yeah. All of us? Nope, he's the only one looking off to the right. There you go. So 28? 28. Yeah. You see a very dense jungle in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, prepare for an ambush, Clark will say quietly to everybody. You also notice that you were pretty sure it was roughly 10 Vespari you'd seen before. Mm. But you only make note of four of them. Still up above. Mm. These are the regular Vespari, the drones. They don't have any weapons of their own. We, uh, we've lost some friends, Clark will say. They're probably setting up their own ambush. Or using us as bait, anyways. There's a crash of thunder off in the distance, and the rain gets suddenly heavier. The ground underfoot uh, seems to be thicker as the moss and everything else expands, absorbing the water. Clark equips some hand axes. Okay. Because you never know. Are you stopping or moving on? Uh, I'm continuing to. I'm happy to continue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Paul is continuing, but with a great sword in hand. Shield. <laughs> it's making a lot of noise as the rain heavily hits on top. Fine. Pretty sure the rain's making lots of noise anyway. It, it is, but there's a bit of a ringing sound coming from your shield. Um, I am literally air. <laughs> as you hold the shield upward, um, it feels heavier than normal. And the rest of you notice a slight glowing coming from the shield. Hmm. I 
I'll just feel down and see if there's like a frog attached to it or something that's hopping. No, it appears to be soggy, and you when you actually move it, you can hear water moving around. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Huh. It's getting mm. very heavy to hold. Make a strength check. <laughs> 18. <laughs> 18. Okay. You I'm good at making strength checks with my plus zero. <laughs> you you manage to uh, hold the, the shield up above your head, but you can feel that it seems like it's gathering water. Huh. Okay, a shield that's made of stone and metal should not do that, but this is getting heavy. You only make sight of two of the Vespari now. Are you attuned to it? Because Paul can carry it. He is strong. Oh, it's not an attunement thing. Okay. My instinct is to double time it. Mm hmm. What do you guys think? Yes, we well, must hurry. You guys are all good for moving through stuff, but I'm not. <laughs> Try to keep up. <laughs> okay. I'll grab him yep. by the arm and, like, continue walking at my regular, unimpressed pace. Okay. Um,. Well, Paul, Iro, and Clark are actually having very little difficulty moving mm -hmm. through here. It's the rest that are having Same her. Uh, Me, only one that actually gets affected Yeah, actually by the this. only one that right now, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Um, um, you find yourself lagging behind a little bit as everybody else moves, moves swiftly on forward. That's fine. I don't fine. have much of a strength, so I can't really pick you up, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, well, Paul is dragging him along as much as he can. Okay. Uh, with Paul's assistance, it overcomes the disadvantage at the moment. Actually, is Paul you're wearing moving, a backpack? You kind of, it, it, dis it lowers the disadvantage, but you're running him moving at half speed because essentially you're carrying him. Uh, I'm not carrying him, just dragging well, him. If Paul's, Paul's not wearing, if Paul's not wearing a backpack, I'll hop on, <laughs> hold my shield, hold the shield over his head, and go. Okay. Um, I'll have Paul make a strength check, and you make a dexterity check. My other shitty stat. Nineteen plus. Eleven. Four. So twenty-three. Okay, so Paul's having no trouble trouble keeping up. You're having a really hard time keeping the shield up, and every once in a while, bonk, it banks on, it, on his head. I just rested on his head. Um, and it feels really, really heavy at this point. Another strength check. Natural one. Okay. Um, you cannot keep it on the top of his head, and you end up kind of slopping it off to one side, and your arm is almost immobile now. Hmm. As you see water now not dripping onto it, but dripping out of it. Yeah, turn it and shake it. What is wrong okay. with your uh, You can't actually lift it up. It's too heavy at the moment. Uh, I will swing like this and see if it like if there's water coming out of it or just... Uh, it does appear to be water coming out of the crystal parts. Huh. Interesting. Stop moving. You slow us down. You only see one Vespari now up ahead moving very quickly from the trees, almost as though it's trying not to be spotted. I'll go join the Vespari. Okay. Um, it seems nervous as you approach uh, and keeps its distance. Yep. Make a perception check. That is 14. 14. You're not sure what it's nervous about, but it does seem to be nervous about something in the area. Um, from your perspective now, you can see up in the tree right beside it mm -hmm. uh, is another Vespari that has been pinned to the tree and its wings have been ripped off. It doesn't appear to be savagely done, strangely enough. It appears to be almost clinically done. Does it look like it's dead? Uh, are you going to get closer? No. Okay, it is slumped on the, on the, uh, on the tree. Yeah, I hand my shield to Paul. It's like, here, you can use this. It's very heavy. Paul has a shield. Mm hmm. He's probably not using no, it I'm right not now. Using it. <laughs> you can just put one in each Paul arm. makes a strength check at disadvantage. Huh. Four plus four, so that's eight. Eight? He drops the shield. Can't hold it. It's too heavy. Hmm. Well, I will get down and pick it up then. Okay. Uh, strength check. Four! can't budge the shield. Hmm. It's almost as though it's made out of pure uh, metal now, or pure stone. What is wrong with this? Water is rolling out of it. Hmm. I'll try to pick it up again. Okay. At disadvantage again. I'm pretty sure that's six. Yeah, that's six. It's a six. Ten. Ten? Uh, Paul's having a hard time on his own moving it. Perhaps the two of you together might be able to move it. Well, yeah, we'd still be moving at zero pace, though. 
Uh, huh. Water started to pool around the edge of the shield where it touches the ground. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to uh, angle it up. Slip my other hand under it and say, I wonder if this will do anything. Uh, and uh, I shout, Radiant Wave! And I trigger its ability. Okay. I make sure Paul, like, Paul makes sure he's not yeah. standing in front of it. I make sure I'm not <laughs> aiming at Paul. <laughs> Paul doesn't really have much of a choice or an idea what's going on. But so there's a big flash of light. So what light. is the effect of Radiant Wave? Same thing as Thunder Wave, but it's, ra it's light instead. So it's basically this... Visually, it probably would be a cone, but technically it's just a big square of okay. uh, light that bursts out and knocks things back. So it's light and water. You're making a rainbow. Hey. Uh, no. Uh, so there is a brilliant flash of blue-white light. Um, you see from above as this, this sort of strange effect uh, pushes back the vegetation in the area. Um, the thing you discover as the shield slightly picks up and you're able to kind of lift it again uh, is the revelation as the as the vegetation is pushed back and torn asunder of dozens of skeletal bodies underfoot the shield feels lighter now the rain stops huh um guys I think perhaps Biloxia was trying to tell me something I don't know what it was exactly, but there's lots of dead bodies back here. All right. I'm not leaving the Vespari alone. Okay. Uh, it seems to want to move on, but seeing that none of, no one is following it, it kind of goes ahead a little bit, spins around, looks, kind of flies back closer to you. It could head back. I mean, we needed it to leave this area, but, I mean... I mean, Paul's going to take a defensive stance just in case whatever killed those bodies... The, the three of them would here. know which okay. direction to Car go back anyways same. because of the... All right. The is thinkers anybody, need to do their things. So. Is anybody going to take a closer look? I'm taking a closer look. Uh, Iroh also assumes a defensive stance looking outward. I kind of do the um, circle of horses. Make a medicine check. Uh, do I have to be trained in it? Uh, nope. Okay. Nine. Nine. Uh, these bodies have probably been dead for a long time. There's no flesh on them whatsoever. There's little scraps left of uh, cloth. Hmm. Make an investigation check to. to you like, can take some time. To are they buried around. in dirt? Is it just them covered in moss? Like maybe the moss ate them, or were okay. they buried? So you're gonna take some time uh, to do some investigation. Yep. How much time? Well, just a few minutes at the start. I mean, if nothing obvious pokes up, then uh, oh, that's a nine. Nine. Um. You start moving around and end up keep tripping over some of the loose bones as they start to crack under feet, mm -hmm. uh, under your foot feet. Um, it's hard to tell what killed them at all. They're now thoroughly part of the ground. And as you watch, you can actually see some of the vines starting to creep back where they had been pushed back by the radiant wave. Well. I'm not sure what killed them, but it very well might have been the vines, because they seem to be active. So we should get out of here. Anyone right. else taking a look? No, that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, we'll give it, like, one last parting glance. Okay. Uh, make a... If it's really quick, is it a disadvantage? Or? A perception check, rather right, than investigation. Perception, not not disadvantage? Nope. Okay. It just won't see very much, necessarily. Fifteen. Hey. Fifteen? Mm -hmm. Strangest thing he's seen for a long time. Paul um, kind of wrinkles his uh, his brow, kicks at some of the uh, bones, and you can convince they're pro properly dead. Stabs one just in case. Doesn't seem to react. Satisfying. Let's go. Yep. All right. The uh, Vespari is relieved, visibly, physically relieved, uh, to both be moving away from the pinned one that was on the on the tree nearby, mm -hmm. and the fact that you're moving entirely again. Um, after about 10 minutes, the warm heat of the jungle permeates everything all over again. Um, there is a bit more brightness, as you can see, the, the, the clouds seem to have cleared off uh, considerably. Make a perception check. Uh, 18 again. 18. 
there's definitely something that's shadowing, following a, on a parallel path now. You can see it down on the ground. You can't make out its details. It almost seems to defy detail. Um, but you're getting this little flash of green. Again, smallish, three or four feet tall, maybe. I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. The rest of you move through the jungle. Mm. The trip back seems to be a bit longer than the trip out. Um, you do, however, within about a, a, a 20 minute time, start to notice the clipped edges where you had been cutting and carving your way through. And once you found those, the pathway is relatively easy to find. Um, once you reach the clipped edges, you do not see any motion coming from below now. Whatever it was either stopped or disappeared or ran off. Yeah. I'm still going to stay vigilant. Okay. Um, more and more of the Vespari that had been vanished before. I mean, presumably it's the same drones. They literally look identical, so it's impossible to tell. Uh, at least from your vantage point, you feel like you could actually pick out an individual drone. Um, uh, as does, uh, well, Iro and Paul, but only in their heads. Um, before long, you are um, once again climbing the rocks of the uh, mounds that surround the, uh, the uh, nest itself. And you can see the nest is very, very busy. There seems to be a lot of activity. Uh, hundreds of drones are flying in and out. You see the larger, bulkier bodies of some of the warriors as well um, seem to be going in all different directions. Uh, wasps or are, are, uh, Vaspari are coming in. Uh, you kind of get that sense of urgency once again as you get closer, wafting off of the nest itself. Okay. Um, as though they had, uh, they had received an alert. And when you let, think of that, you realize that the ones who had gone on ahead probably went the entire distance on ahead to warn that there was something. Uh, okay. uh, and then a few more came back, probably with messages from the, the hive itself. You crest the hill, which is probably the coolest part of the island, just because it's so high up, and then descend back into the relatively calmer jungle inside this massive hollow in the ground. About how long is the travel? Um, I think it takes you a better part of two and a half hours okay. um, because of the the thick jungle for the slowest speed you're, you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, um, I'll be moving at half speed for me, which is 50. Okay, so it's to keep pace with the rest of them. To keep pace with the rest of them, but also that allows me to stay vigilant and keep watch. Okay. So. And um, sneak if you want to. <laughs> the Vespari are also quite fast when they're yeah. flying. They're very slow on land, but the, the, the drone that's there um, easily keeps pace with you. In fact, you think it's probably even faster than you uh, if it were going at full speed. I mean, I'm fast as well. <laughs> so. You are. You are. Um, but it's surprisingly fast. Faster than most of the birds you've seen. Back faster than all the birds you've seen. Interesting. You make your way back into the hive. Meanwhile, you awake on a hard surface. It's a little bit warm, um, slightly malleable at, pl at points kind of as you, you kind of move and kind of stretch and groan, and your face feels compressed. There's something in your mouth that seems to be obscuring it, and you find it hard to turn your head from side to side. You open your eyes, and it's complete darkness. And the air smells stale. Put my hand to my face. It doesn't reach your face as you find yourself covered in something. Um, it feels like uh, a little bit of cloth. It feels like a little bit of something sticky, um, and it kind of comes away in strands you can feel from your, your hand as well. Does it feel like something bee-like, or like honey, or can I smell anything? Um, it smells like stale wool and slightly sweet. Also, your head is covered in lead. But I well, that's the, that's the close-in sensation. It's actually been wrapped since then as well. Okay. Um, as you feel like you're wearing a helmet, actually, a very tight-fitting helmet. I'll try to, like, take off whatever <laughs> is on it. Okay. <laughs> Um, his hands bound? They were. They were. Okay. Um, I think he's been cocooned. As you, uh, as you kind of move and, and start trying to scrape away at this stuff, it just sort of comes away in gobs. 
and it's very, very sticky, and you're having a hard time kind of moving. You can't see it. It's, it's not touching your face. Your eyes are blocked as well in darkness. Uh, and you feel your hands uh, kind of pushed aside mm -hmm. uh, as you hear uh, Shank's voice very loudly. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Do what? Try to crawl out of that. It's for your own good. Crawl out of what? Give me a description. Accurate, please. Uh, well... And in terms of uh, body sensations, what do I feel? Do I have clothes on? Yeah, because what happened yeah, last you time? You feel like was... you have your clothes <laughs> okay. on, but it feels like, like everything scraps. is very, very tight. <laughs> okay, like entire um, body wise. Or? Yeah, okay. yeah. But I can move my hands. You can move your hands. Your arms seem to be free. Uh, you were kind of. It didn't. Well, hell, I don't know. What does uh, the hum do, or what? What has it done? You kind of went nuts and a little bit sick. So. Oh dear! I hope I didn't make a mess. I'm ruined. <laughs> Wrapped your head in lead right, that's to what it is. try to help, and then they went to find something. And well, the queen had a suggestion, and I didn't really know what the hell she meant at the time. She says you're not going to hatch, if that's any consolation. Do I know what she means? Uh, you're not unless you can pick it up. Not really. It's she's leaving a lot of details out. Um, she said that sometimes when the, I, I don't know if you call them princesses, young queens, when they get ill, they're sort of put back into the, what did you call it? Oh. The egg? The yeah. gunk that I'm sitting into right now? It's sort of like a birthing chamber. It's supposed to have healing properties. Do you feel better? And you feel pretty, uh, it'd be kind of wasted, like you've been running a marathon for days. Um, you also feel like your entire body is tingling slightly when she mentions that, yeah. which you hadn't really noticed before. What day is um, this? You're also kind of speaking around a bit of a gag that you're kind of trying to <laughs> come out of your mouth. What day is this? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know. Well, but unconscious, I must be feeling better. They haven't been gone a full day, I don't think, so I think you're probably... Okay, they say that we can take you out of there now. Good. Don't do anything stupid. Uh, never do anything stupid. No promises. <laughs> and you feel your whole body moving uh, a little bit roughly uh, as you kind of get the sense that you're being picked up and dragged out. Um and then kind of set down and you hear this tearing sound from above you and suddenly light is visible uh, and you see a, <gasps> the, the sharp uh, points of a dagger that's being shoved in and kind of pulled and cutting away at, at layers above you. Careful, careful. Not and your eyes do get a little bit of a shock uh, because you see, uh, you see Shank's face at first uh, looking a little bit concerned and curious uh, but then you also notice that Shank's armor is not exactly glowing. It's like there's a thousand miniature pits of light that occasionally every once in a while goes and a little bright, bright uh, spark goes off. So it looks kind of like a starfield almost? That like Kind of, you know? yeah, yeah. So based on like the hum being a fallen star and... and the armor like reacting to it strangely, can I pick anything out? Can I figure anything? Like some kind of link between them, or um, you can make a Narcana roll. It's Five. a disadvantage because you're still exhausted. Five plus thirteen, so eighteen. Okay. Um, you've seen Shanks' armor before, and it just looked black and wet and glistening constantly. Um, the fact that it has changed once introduced the hum clearly indicates there's some connection between the two. Uh, you also would have seen Shank's reaction to seeing the egg when you pulled it out. Uh, and it was a look of awe and amazement and almost reverence as uh, Shank proceeds to cut you out and you realize that you were kind of wrapped up in a cocoon-like substance. Okay. Uh, there is a, a, a kind of oily, sticky substance surrounding you um, as well as uh, uh, this heavy... Uh, box essentially it was molded around your head 
Uh, is the which is off the, as well? Or? Uh, unless you're taking it off. Shank isn't taking that off. Yeah. Okay. What Make a strength check. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and oh. it is a disadvantage. Oh. It's not an actual helmet. You might have to peel it off. <laughs> That's the problem. Eight. Yeah, it's so tight to your head and with all the extra goop around it, it's more or less welded to your head at the moment. I'll um, take out whatever's in my mouth though, so I can speak. More yeah, and it's it's a simple it's a simple gag that actually looks like it's somewhat uh, almost uh, deteriorated slightly. You look down at your clothing, and it's still pretty rough from where it had been uh, badly burned up. I think thing. before. Yeah. And then I grew like ten inches. <laughs> That's true. Wait, context. That's, That's not a bad. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, well, no, you. <laughs> You became ten inches taller. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so your clothes don't fit terribly well anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of tore a lot of the seams there as well, and you can also see that your body is covered in this uh, now that exposed to air quickly uh, drying and uh, uh, solidifying substance that's kind of amber in color, uh, but Shank has managed to kind of open up the the top of it. You can see one of the drones. Uh, is there as well, um, kind of looking over a shank, and, and uh, uh, you breathe in the air, and you understand what the drone is communicating, okay. um, which is a little confusing because they don't really use the phrases in the same way that you do. But the gist of it is, it's a strange-looking queen, but I think it's livable, essentially. <laughs> Um, and you see Shank kind I'm of... I'm just like flabbergasted of, at that for Kind of laugh comment. a little bit as well, trying trying to look and interpret what the hell the drone just said. Right, because Shank also was... Shank was also affected by it. Right. Uh, although in a different way. Uh, can you take this off? Uh, I can I can certainly try. This is probably going to hurt. Also, are there any bright lights present? Uh, no, it's fairly muted light, actually. Good. Um, again, that sort of slightly amberish glow from all around you. Uh, and you feel a sort of sharp pain as one part is sort of bent upward, but the, the little joint kind of went into your face at the moment. Oh, that's not right. Let me try that again. Uh, can you help me? And she points to the drone, and the drone's like... Drones don't really have hands. They have pincers. So the drone will try to help. Watch the face, please. Uh, that's better. As you feel this uh, being sort of peeled away from your head, she tried to kind of just grab it with one side and, and twist, but that didn't work. So now between the two of them, they're kind of peeling it upward and downward uh, off of you. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. One! One. Uh, you are overwhelmed with sensation as like a thousand uh, brilliant sparks explode in your mind. And you can now feel everything of the hum once more. Um, it's overwhelming and you find yourself staggered. Uh, you have now, I think it's your third How level of exhaustion? Too? Yeah, your third level oh of exhaustion. God. As you find it impossible to think very clearly. <laughs> but it is an amazing power that you that you touched um, and you stagger slightly and you feel this sort of kathunk as the uh, lead is placed back on your head when they see your reaction. Uh, and then kind of Can jam. you take it off again? I don't think that's a good idea. You looked crazy. I was feeling crazy. Fine. Well, that's what Ramon says all the time. It doesn't mean he's right. I, I can't speak to that. But Believe all me. I know is you looked... I looked fine and I was feeling fine. We'll just wait until they get back before we try that again, maybe. You're not going to hurt yourself or anyone else, are you? Well, no. Because we can put you back in. Feel great. I'm not going to hurt myself. That would be dumb. Yeah, that would be really dumb. Exactly. So you're not going to do it again. I didn't do anything. Well, there's I a reason we stuck you in this pod. Which was. You were kind I, of. I was in need of healing. Yes. Well, you were kind of looking to hurt yourself. It looked like not really intentionally. I just had the heart of a fallen star in my hands. I forget what yeah. happened next. There was a, the face of the queen. She was quite beautiful in that light, actually. But what did it feel like? Touching the star. Powerful. Do you know its name? A bit overwhelming. Do I know its name? Can I like remember and see what it? No, it, it was an overwhelming sensation. Even thinking back on the memories of it, it's like thinking back about staring into a bright light. All you really get is that bright light in your face, and there's not much else you can really interpret. Okay. 
I'll relay that information. It was like staring into a bright light. Huh. And I've... being overwhelmed. Just like now, even though I was still in control of my faculties. I wonder which one it was. I wonder if that means the sacrifice worked. Which sacrifice? Oh, never mind. No, I, I want to know. I mean, if I'm to be sitting in these chambers doing nothing, I would rather learn something while I sit in these chambers doing nothing. You have to make sure you give to the stars or they will destroy you. So every once in a while you destroy something and they, they leave you alone. So if I were to destroy something, the star, whatever it is, would not destroy me? Assuming it's trying to destroy me? Do they try to destroy... Well, I've, I've heard of them falling elsewhere, but I don't think so. Where else have they fallen? All over Thunk. And has anybody ever written about an encounter with a, fall, with, with a fallen star that survived? Probably. Have you read such... No. Heard stories about it? Well, we tell all kinds of stories. That's how we survive. But Do you know what's happened to the last person who touched a star? Yeah, you fell over and then kind of went nuts. I mean, I mean, before me. <laughs> I've never seen one before. Not, a, not in person. And the stories just tell about how dangerous they are. How they'll eventually claim the whole world. Well, we, we can't have that. Well, I'd prefer not to. <laughs> Thunk is bad enough. I mean... It, you can hardly imagine what your little island of Vatur would look like after those things fell. Do I know if it's based on the vision I had at Marius's blessing before? Mm -hmm. Is that something similar that would happen? Like, you do. Your mind does like flash back to the fire. idea that yeah. there were falling stones of fire, or falling balls of fire. You didn't see stones as such yeah. um, crashing down upon the city of Vatur. Do you, Do I know if it's a falling star, or was it just something? Like I mean, without being able to see the vision again, it's it's hard to say exactly, but it does bear a striking resemblance, okay. so to speak. So what causes stars to fall anyway? If we knew that, we could probably tell them not to. As it is, we know the sacrifices seem to help. At least they sort of help. And the stars can provide a lot of guidance along the way. Yes, I've read a book about that once. I'm sure you did. You seem to read a lot of books. Not as much now, but uh, I, need to get, I need to get back to the library. Right, well, so one thing at a time. The artifact. I mean, you're a little distracted as the little, <laughs> little popping of, of bright light on her armor. Can I touch the things like... The can poppings. You touch your armor? You can yeah. certainly reach out and try. Do you mind if I touch your armor? It seems to be reacting. Uh, you think that's a good idea? And Why not? What could possibly happen? I suppose. It isn't hurting you when you're. Yes, you kind of stand stock still um, as you approach. So I'll touch one of the um, little sparks of light. You move up and you kind of stand, it's a little bit woozy. Um, you take one point of damage. Ow. Of, uh... Essentially... I'll say it's radiant. Oh, uh, no, fire, actually. Um, as it kind of burns a little bit as it pops. So, was that fun for you? No. Great. Well, Do you the, feel any burning sensations on the inside, or is it just on the outside? The no. Air? No, it's just been kind of weird. And I didn't want to take it off, because lost my armor. I just don't know what's happening. Can I try to figure out what's happening? You can certainly try. It's is not it? a roll. It's time. Oh. Investigation. We're talking. Well, I've got nothing to do until buddies get back, so... <laughs> <laughs> so describe how, over the next few hours, you are investigating the effect of this armor. I'll poke it with various objects, see what poke happens. Poke it with a stick. Okay. <laughs> No, but like, is one type of material, does that get a different, a different reaction than another type of material would? Okay, so what kinds or of like material are you Or like studying the patterns that it makes jumping around. Okay. Writing them down. 
Okay. See if I can figure out like what something. kinds of material are you from? Whatever I can find, really. Okay, there's not a lot here. It's whatever you have with you, really. Is my stuff still with me? Because I remember I got my pack back, or did I? Yeah, you find your stuff is sitting in the corner of the room. Okay. They brought it down. I'll touch it with a pen. Okay. Uh, with the glass tube. What happens with glass? So just, uh, generally, you find that it is heat and light are the primary things that seem to be coming off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is reacting to something. At this point, your only hypothesis is the hum. The only thing you can really note that changed or that would have changed. Um, it uh, does not seem to have a particular pattern. You kind of s you spend like twenty minutes just sort of noting down, and it's like oh, there's one little pop on the on the uh, shoulder. There's another one on the chest. There's another one sort of on the other side of the chest. It's like it doesn't really seem to follow any particular pattern. Um, and it seems to. It's warm to the touch, even yeah. when you don't uh, don't pick on one of those particular exploding points. Uh, the armor itself is warm to the touch. Shank does not seem to notice any warmth whatsoever, and the little explosions don't seem to be bothering her at all either. Okay. So you spend a few hours, uh, you and Shank. A couple of the drones come in from time to time. They they give you uh, small containers that are essentially the same stuff you were wrapped up in but now solidified into small bowls and vessels uh, to bring you water. Um, there is a, a sticky sap that they bring in a bowl um, with a uh, uh, essentially what looks like the same chiton that the armor of the warriors were and also the same chiton that their swords are made out of but kind of flattened down a bit to be a bit of a spoon so it's something to eat. Okay. Um, uh, you see Shank kind of gingerly taking some of it and then watching your reaction as you eat it. What's my reaction? Uh, it tastes really good. It's very, very sweet. It's practically pure sugar. Um, cool. And you can almost feel like your blood pressure going up as, sugar you, high. Eat, as you eat that. Um, You're really awake now. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, it is a little hard because that weight of the lead on your head does kind of make your head loll a little bit. And you kind of, you're finding your neck is getting a bit cramped over those couple of hours. Uh, but Shank seems to be, every time you kind of start picking away at it, she kind of slaps your hand away and kind of presses it back in place. Um, Blood was useful for something. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you kind of, you discover there's definitely uh, a reaction to, or the only thing you can think of as chipping is the home. So this is definitely reacting. It's very, very dense metal. Mm -hmm. Um, you uh, at one point take out uh, a small dagger and try to scratch it. It does not scratch. No, it does not seem to. Um, and she takes a little bit of offense to you trying to scratch at the armor, but also noticing it didn't really happen. Uh, it does leave kind of a, 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 a streak of these little pops behind it, though. Um, you kind of think of it resembling a little bit of what happens to flint when you scratch it with the uh, the striker, so like sparks flying off of uh, off of a flint. Okay. Um, and then both you and Shank, even dulled as the sensation of the hum is for you, um, kind of notice and Shank probably first and kind of draws her weapon this increased activity around the hive. Um, you can literally hear the buzzing of thousands of wings uh, becoming more and more active, and you can see outside the drones and some of the warriors flying on by. It's at this time that you arrive, the rest of you arrive at the base of the hive. And you see this busy, busy activity going on. Your escorts have long since left you. Once, once, you, once you reach the top and could see the hive itself, they didn't stay with you. Up, up, up. Looks like they're busy as bees. Busy bees. From a distance, it's easy to see this as a wasp nest, yes. So you proceed on down to the hive? Yep. yep. Okay. You approach the hive and can hear uh, that droning sound of the wings, very, very busy. Um, more and more warriors seem to be appearing. Um, there's a, a squad of a dozen of them, it seems, going off in one particular direction, another going off in another direction. It seems like 
uh, uh, dozens upon dozens of these are heading out. The uh, drones, for the most part, you see are on the outside of the, the, uh, the nest and look to be closing up a lot of the access points that were there, uh, as if they're hardening the shell of the thing itself. You move inside, um, and one of the drones uh, seems to come directly up at you. You recognize it as the one drone that stayed behind with your group okay. before, uh, and starts to gesture and pulls you along through several of the pathways. We have our guide again. I will um, follow Clark. Yeah. Every once in a while, it has to kind of stop you as you see just dozens of drones and dozens of warriors kind of moving through the hallways. But it very quickly moves you through the multiple levels moving upward. You can now see that a lot of the interior chambers have also been closed off. Mm. Um, you can see that there's now uh, something you notice as you're moving through is uh, there are what look to be like warriors, but they're not fully formed. Um, it looks as though their bottom half is not entirely formed. They're halfway out of the goo. Uh, and you can see now that they are, uh, are extruding uh, arrows from their arms. Uh, it seems to be a slow process, but they seem to be ramping up uh, more and more weaponry. Um, as you move upward further and further, uh, and the, the drone kind of gestures you in, you see a uh, fairly large chamber with a, a, what looks like a split seed a huge human-sized split seed that's been torn open, and you see Shank standing there with uh, 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 Zakis poking at her armor periodically, and then uh, probably pulling out one of your books and making notes as you go through. Uh, Zakis you're having a hard looks time. Insane right now, doesn't he? Uh, no, because he's got the helmet on. He <laughs> actually does look really quite <laughs> comical. As as the helmet is on, you can still see little bits and pieces of the now hardened sap that was around him. His clothing is kind of littered with it. Every once in a while, you kind of brush and some of it breaks off and falls off. But you're too busy with it. Uh, you've tried not to get any of it onto your onto your book, that but you bad. also had difficulty because the pen keeps sticking to your fingers where there's a little bit of residue left. Uh, there's a little bit of tuft of hair kind of sticking out of one side where they did pull the helmet off briefly and then put it back on. Um, and it, it seems to be kind of poking and prodding and, and scraping across Shank's armor. Hey, you're conscious. And you're not raving. Well, no. That's great. I'm trying to figure out the armor. Do I know if, it could, if the yeah, armor is yeah, like That's armor. what you say. What you hear is, No! 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 Armor! Must think it out! Must think it out! As there's some difficulty, it seems, in the expression that's actually happening. Can I figure out if the armor is like curved from, a fall, from the Fallen Star, though? Um, you can make a... Hmm, make a survival roll. At this advantage, because you're still... Under the effects of exhaustion. Nine. Plus five. Fourteen. It's not one solid piece, but you do notice sort of striations in it that, that look more like uh, stone than metal. Okay. Um, so somewhere in that in that area. If it's not made out of star stone, it's somehow connected to it. Hmm. As the air elemental kind of buzzes in through, buzzes, yeah. uh, your guide leaves you. It seems to just instantly kind of vanish into the, into the stream of, of insects. Clark will, bus, bus bus Clark will present the thing and set it on the ground nearby. So Clark pulls out this strange mm -hmm. looking... Uh, what's strange is, is to me, uh, there's a vegetable, and I can't remember which one it is, that almost it has the right shape. But essentially take a, a, a large ball at the center of looks like metal. Out of multiple sides of it there are these spigots or spouts that kind of come off of it look like they're they're kind of pulled out of the metal itself but it's also uh, an overlapping uh, sphere as there's two giant handles on the top with a little latch that when you free it kind of uncorks or uncou un uncouples the handles and the thing kind of comes apart a little bit like a flower petal okay. uh, inside there's a small uh, barely a dust of ash inside on the outside you can also see that there are carved in runes you can also see that it, uh, it it's it's weathered and worn. Maybe this was the artifact we were looking after the entire time, and not the act, and not the hum. Yeah, I think the the stone powers this. The stone, like the fallen, the fallen stone. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the fallen or the the fallen stone that they've got here is a lot bigger than what would fit in this. So, I mean, if this is what. Emerald was looking for. We wouldn't need the whole star. The whole uh, star. We'd only need a piece of it. Okay. Maybe it grew. 
He yeah. can understand me. Maybe <laughs> what? Maybe it grew. Absorbed stuff. You hear the wind say to you. Yeah. Right. He, he can understand me. So. Because... Because he speaks for Mordial? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. You took up some Maybe it grew, like the star you said? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Someone yeah, can as, understand as, me. As Zacchaeus answers the wind. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a weird. It's weird he goes on insanity. I just. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. Uh, I still understand Colin. In, you in don't the have state, to. In the state that Zacchaeus is in, while you speak plainly, again, interpret yeah. it as there is a bit of. Ra- the, actually, the thing that you are reminded of, the two of you are most reminded of, is how Salazar used to speak. (laughs) uh, In that very disconnected way where phrases kind of come out, not quite as roughly as him and not nearly as metaphorical as he often spoke, but there is that sort of sense of disconnectedness from uh, from language and from understanding. We really gotta get him away from here. I heard that. Yes. Uh, Do you smart people want to do the smart thing? I'm gonna go see what we're doing. Yeah. The I'll smart guy has kind of got his head. What's it you put this on, right. by the way? Can you take it off? Clark's gonna take off bang thing, hurt head, brain. Clark's going to excuse himself. Okay. He's Step back into the hallway. Gonna... You have to kind of be careful because there's the constant yep. streaming uh, motion on the outside. Yeah. Let's um, see if we can flag down a drone. Okay. I'd like to speak to the queen briefly, if possible. Can okay. We arrange that. Uh, make a persuasion check. Sure. As you kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to. Uh, <laughs> with the one, no. Yeah, they seem to have a singular mission, and you get the sense that these drones are not that smart. Right. Uh, and once set to something, they seem to be unflappable. They have their program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ones moving a little slower, the larger warriors, uh, uh, kind of seem to take notice, but don't seem to acknowledge your, the, the urgency of your request. Okay. Try again later. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask Shank. Uh, has anyone tried taking the helmet off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'd recommend that. Okay. Uh, no, you're gonna, to you're gonna keep the hat for now. It's keeping you sane. But it's interfering or. with my work. And what's going on? It feels like the activity inside the hive has picked up. Yeah, they seem to be uh, closing... Well, Iro uh, seems nervous as she's picking up on it as well. Yeah. I don't think they're closing up the hive per se. I think they're getting ready to defend it. From what? And I don't know. What have you been up to anyway while I was asleep? We got this thing. We blew up a tower. Tower? Mm, it was full of books, but the books were all gooey. What? <laughs> There wasn't anything legible. No, not for you. Do you know how many languages I know? I could have read them. It's not languages. Remember what? Remember the state of the books where that we killed the little dragon, and they were all like covered in goo and acid and crap and couldn't be read. Yeah. This is kind of the same thing. Just the books have been sitting out in the open for centuries and centuries, and there's nothing left of them. However, be trained restoration. We got you this, and we found. Uh, so the two items you found, one was a, a ring that was inside a, a nice wooden box, a cherry box. At least it had been nice, but it had practically been uh, evaporated from many, many centuries. Yeah. The other was a small dagger, which you didn't realize was a dagger uh, until the uh, the sheath fell off. It looked as though it was a rod of some kind. It had emitted some, some uh, I think, evocation magic would be the right one. I have the thing right here. So dagger, Evo. What kind of magic did the ring? Uh, abjuration. So yeah, I'll relay that to him because that's as much as detect magic got me. Okay. Um. Uh, I think that. We need to get a hold of the queen. She mentioned us possibly getting a reward from that treasure hoard up there, and then we should go, because the hum is not doing anything good for all y'all's brains. You look around, you don't see Clark, as you step down the hallway, decided to take a little more aggressive approach at Persuasion. Uh, That was a 15 15 on it for one of the warriors. Yeah, so you kind of get get up into its face and literally grab it by these large chitin- chitinous shoulder pads and kind of hold it there as it, as it seems to not be fighting you so much as 
it has somewhere it's supposed to be, uh, but you can you kind of stare at it and communicate, um, and then it stops uh, and turns and leaves, but it's not going in the direction where it was before. I'll follow it. Okay. Um, it uh, goes out through one of the holes in the wall and jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> And sprouts its wings and flies. <laughs> uh, Clark will return to the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you kind of swim back through the. It's a little easier in some ways because you're somewhat swimming with the crowd now to kind of mm. make it back to the room. It takes you a moment to go, not the right room, not the right. This room. one. <laughs> and then kind of swim yourself back in. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we need to go soon. I mean, pretty, at the very least, whatever they're battening down the hatches for is probably not something we want to meet up with currently. I, I tell Zach if there was something following us in the woods. What was it? What it was? Like? I don't know. We, we did find a big patch of dead people that I think Paluxia was trying to get me to find. It followed us until a certain point. Until we got closer to the, the home. This is being relayed by Zakis because yeah. he's going to understand the language. Yeah. So mm-hmm. again, imagine the broken the broken translation. Yeah. English. <laughs> um, the stream of Vaspari moving outside stops. Something the hallway is empty. Can't, well, what do I, I feel? I, I'd like to stay here and rest. Um, but you're feeling kind of again. The sensation is a bit deadened. Um, there's still a sense of urgency that has not changed at all. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you also kind of sense it still, mm-hmm. but it's residual now uh, because you're not sensing the things that are outside themselves. Um, about 30 seconds later, um, you hear some movement in the hallway mm-hmm. um, and look out to see two of the large warriors walking in front, and you can see walking between them and two more warriors is the queen. Yeah. Well, let's make let's make room in the room here then. Gangway. I'll greet the queen. <laughs> As uh Tactus goes Zzzz. Uh not quite. Not quite. Really. Although his his words are slurring kind of in that direction. <laughs> um as the warriors kind of block the hallway in either direction so the queen can walk into the room. Uh, the queen looks a little bit different even from the last time you've seen her. Now she seems to have uh, added layers of triton onto her body. Um, bulking up somewhat. Um, there is a bit more regality in her stance, a bit more confidence. Um, her eyes seem to have a, a bit of a, of, a, of a shine to them, uh, a, a purpose. How is your friend? How are you doing? I'm doing great. He seems to be kind of bug nuts. <laughs> That's I'm probably afraid offensive. That the, I'm afraid that the hum has taken him quite strongly. Uh, yes. The helmet is helping a little bit. Um, the wind hits the helmet. <laughs> is yes, is plonk. something? Are Everyone you gearing stop. up for war? Our scouts have reported something strange. A being we do not understand. What did it look like? If I can have a look at it, I may be able to identify it. It was small and green. Do I know anything about small and green? There are no. thousands of small green Let me things. consult the book. Of you know, the the most book. recent small and green things you can grow encounter were grungs. That wouldn't be threatening an entire hive, like. Maybe I mean, the they could just squash a grung. We did not recognize it, but we could not get very close. The drones who had spied upon it found themselves... Well, we do not know exactly. We have found many corpses. Alzira said there were fiends in this area, so I'll pull out my book. Um, Elwin's Guide to Demons, both useful and not. You see uh, Zakis go over to his bag, the dripping goo still on his fingers as he starts rifling. I'll like wipe it on whatever clothes I have left. You don't notice it. Yeah. It's a natural part of it. Zakis, hands up. What? Mm -hmm. Clean hands. (laughs) Uh, As you feel cold, cold as your hands (laughs) swept away, and you start to shiver slightly. Book. Okay. So I'll flip open the pages, try to find anything about a demon that is small and green and powerful enough to scare an entire hive. Okay, which book are you consulting? Uh, the Elwin's Guide to Demons, both useful and not. Okay. If I can find it. Somewhere. Yeah. It's going to be the very oh, last it's one. It's the perils of carrying your own last Okay, lift that up again. There we go. 
Last one, called it. Well, it'll always be the last one. I, well, one. I kept seeing it laying there. He kept pulling pages. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Fail of perception. It's, it's the helmet. Yeah. Not a lot of depth perception. I kind of wish we actually had a sheet of lead and we put it on your head and see how hard it is to keep your head up. That would be going. I'm pretty sure, too, like, for I'd be larping a little too far. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to have lead sheets up home. Out of game comment, I have like this big dragon helmet I'm making, and it, it's pretty freaking heavy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll wear it some at some point. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the book may be used when identifying a demonic species or even an individual de demonic being. So mm -hmm. it gives advantage. Yeah, if you can see the being, but you're getting secondhand, very vague descriptions okay. of it. So it'll be not an advantage? Uh, no. No, okay. it will not. All right. So you can start flipping through the book. As you see him cracking open one of these one of hey. these uh, tomes. Describe the book. The description of the book is at the top of the page. Codex... Wood block cover, paper, standard size, medium, well preserved, beautifully illuminated, full color pages throughout, a previously unknown work by a well known author, believed to have never existed. Scholars swear it was destroyed or never existed, 125 years old. The author's purpose was to educate, author was a stage. And it's and, an elven. And it is an elven, and you, he just flipped through the pages, and they are just these gorgeous, full color, full illustrations of just bizarre looking things. Even looking over his shoulder, the images start to swim slightly. Um, how he's making any sense of this, you do not know. You start to flip through. I got an 18. Is that an Arcana roll? Uh, it is an investigation roll. Unless it says otherwise in the book. But 27. 27? Okay. There are approximately uh, seven different kinds of small green demon that are mentioned. Um... You can't really narrow it down any further than that. I'll show these. There are also seven other ones that can take on multiple forms. For starters, I'll show the seven small green demons to Elsa Eric because she saw them. So. Okay. <laughs> Which ones? I saw a vague yeah. movement. But if For, you from you, small and green is about the most detail you have. But if you had to pick one out of a lineup, which one would it be? Um, make a perception check. Yeah. <laughs> That was not a roll, but it fell on a 20. A 1. <laughs> you nope. really can't narrow it down at all. Um, nothing of that actually looks anything like what you saw. Um, one of them starts to look kind of favorable, but then it says that everything wilts around it. Well, you definitely weren't seeing evidence of that. So one out of the seven gets eliminated. Uh, but even then, it's, if it has power, it might be able to stop that if it wanted to. Is that good? Yeah. Uh... Do any of those ones have notable control over plant growth? Because this place, it started, it overgrew the, tra overgrew the tracks that was, we came through, but once we seemed to get past a certain area, it just stopped. The area with all the bodies had like vines were growing back right away and that sort of thing. So are there any of them that have a link to plants? I will go back to the sixth that are still possible candidates. Okay. Let's start going through those. Yep. Any uh, of them have power over plants? Make a roll. Three. Does he have plus advantage now because he's got... Uh, still no further description, really. Three um, plus nine, so that's twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Not a single one of them has uh, control over plants. Goddamn. I will ask the queen if it's... She's available here. I'll bookmark those six pages, though, just for future reference. With what? I got this goo. I'll remember <laughs> these six pages for future yeah. reference. You'll try. Okay. Well, uh, well, write them down in a book, just like it, wherever your normal notebook is. Just go pages. Yeah, I'll just yeah. There aren't any page numbers in the book, but... How can we be of assistance? We don't fly, but we are armed. You have your limitations. I appreciate you helping to defend. We don't know what we are dealing with so I cannot help tell what we need. We have sent more scouts and many of our warriors to try to at least see what this thing is. Have there been any results so far? Only corpses. There are thousands of the drones, so we should be able to find and locate at least the general area where it is. But so we will not know for some time yet. Has this been something you've faced before? I am not familiar with this, and there is nothing that I was able to pull from the ancestral jelly. So this artifact that we just retrieved, 
and, and now there's the what is this thing? as a coincidence she moves, she moves forward to to look at it and she reaches forward to pick it up anybody stopping her yeah, I'm not gonna Clark, Clark will stay yeah. his hand okay uh, she reaches out it. it it is substantially heavy too that's something that, that I didn't quite emphasize but it is very very dense um, and she doesn't struggle too much, but it is obviously of a weight to her as well. Okay, what we is know. this thing? And she turns it around a little bit. We believe that's the thing that we were actually sent here to find. Maybe it was holding something at bay, like whatever thing is attacking Dahas now. Um, Emerald said that the thing was causing the effects. So it's probably that the stone, the star, the hum, whatever, somehow ended up either growing or it was just a part of it or something like that. I know that in Zachis we don't pay attention to her because we don't understand. It's true. <laughs> That's true, actually. Um, yeah. The queen kind of um, looks over at this strange say, shifting set of mist. I think that the star that you have, perhaps a part of it was used in this before as their defense. You mean the egg? Yes. Um, mm. So our thought was that we do not need the entire egg. Perhaps a sample that would fit in that is all we would need. The egg is a touch more powerful than I anticipated. Do you think you can safely take a sample? I don't know because well, we haven't he's died from the it yet. one that would do it. Unless the effects were is it severe. Is the if is I'm the prepared. egg stone? It is a living stone, as far as I know. I if I can be more prepared, I may be able to study it more successfully. I can be so bold. She seems to be pretty comfortable. It might with not it. be safe for you to travel any closer, down, young one. Well, but I have perhaps a spell you can tell me what these that things can help mean. Take she points. Off of it. She points at the uh, rooms that mm -hmm. are on the side. What do this? What does this mean? So, what language is it? Uh, you don't recognize it. God dang it. Uh, no, I don't have that spell right now. I'm assuming if Alzara doesn't recognize it, it's not anything we, any of us know. Alzara's never taken a closer look. Okay. Me neither. I really oh, sorry, the, so about the thingy? The thing. Yeah, okay. Clark grabbed the thing yeah. and you guys bolted, so... If it wasn't Celestial, I wouldn't know it. He'll pick it up, look around. Okay. I mean, I'll take a look at it. We'll show it to he Alzara. He asks, um, okay. what languages do Between I speak? Between the two of you, what feats do you have? Uh, observant and mobile. He has uh, an intelligence have bonus, and uh, I'll have to look at them. Did now. you take linguist? Yes. Yes, okay. that was the other one. Right. If um. it's anywhere related to dwarven or orc, that could be useful. But because they use the same, they use the same alphabet. That's it. But so yeah, I just have druidic, draconic, elvish, and common. Yeah, my first okay. currently Orin. My first team was like two points so of intelligence. And who same. knows dwarven? First of all, uh, the letters would make sense, but their order wouldn't. Okay. Um, so you can make a perception check. Sure. Or sorry, you make a um, make a history check. You can cast <laughs> comprehend languages as a ritual. You too. make a. Uh, uh, I will make it a history check as well. You make it an advantage. At advantage. Okay. Yep. It nullifies the disadvantage from like three it levels. Does. Oh wow. When, uh, no, you you, you you would roll the advantage normally. nullifies the disadvantage. Well, so you the lowest it. of the two rolls was still a fifteen yeah. plus. Okay. Well, so 15. Roll, roll one die. Is that a history? Or? No, roll one no. die. You, yeah, you gotta reroll it. God. Five. Five. Plus nine, so 14. 14, and you got a... Nine. Nine, okay. You're looking at it going, there's some vague resemblance to Dwarven, but it doesn't look right. Okay. Um, what was your total? 14. Fuck memory, I just said it out loud. Yeah, 13 or 14. 14, 14. okay. Yes, it was a nine plus, no, it was a five plus nine. What's strange about the runes that are on this is they, they sort of resemble Dwarven, but then you look at it more closely and realize, no, it's, it's actually a cross between uh, Dwarven and Infernal, okay. and it's a cipher. There's a code here. Right. It was not meant to be easily understood. I always wanted to take the Codebreaker talent. It's the language talent that actually has it. Because uh, yeah. you understand ciphers yeah, yeah. as well as uh, three extra languages. Yeah. That's why I was asking about the, the talents. Because yeah. I was pretty sure you had it. But How long is it going to take me to figure this out? That's impossible to tell until you start. Mm. 
Okay, I will start. Okay. So you take the uh, the item and just sort of sit down? Yep. I'll just be like... Uh, <laughs> sit down I'll, with it. I'll speak to the queen. Is there anything we can do while he conducts his research that would be useful to your efforts? I don't think there's Until my drones there. identify what it is we are looking at, I'm not sure. You have done me a great service, and I would not use you like a drone. It would be too dangerous. You I are appreciate that. However, if there is some service you feel you can offer, I would be willing to mm. hear it. Uh, perhaps if you had an easy way for us to communicate with you while things are going on, while you tend to your uh, kingdom, queendom, empire. <laughs> Did you just assume that? Do you have a do you have a runner? We could a messenger. We could. I will with. assign a drone to you. Okay. And that drone can be replenished. We don't want to keep you, but at the same time, we might need to contact you quickly. We are preparing for the worst. As I said, many drones had been killed already, and even a warrior or two, without seeing any detail of this thing. We are making sure the hive is protected and we will be building additional safety, closing any of the entrances that we do not use and cannot protect. Mm -hmm. So it may be difficult for you to leave the hive for some time. Mm -hmm. Understood. I, if you'll give me a moment, I may be able to get you some information. Mm -hmm. As I just realized I should check, look and see how long it takes to cast that spell. Oh, a minute. Um, I can attempt to ask some questions of my goddess hmm. and see if I can perhaps narrow down what it is. This is interesting. I would like to observe you in this process. Sure. Um, I'm afraid it will use the last of my energy. I will have nothing else that I can do uh, until I can rest. But knowledge is very powerful at this stage. Yes. Uh, the other thing is, whatever this is, I think we have to leave because the longer we're here, the worse off he gets. And pretty soon he's going to be overrun by it. We have to get him out of this area. I'm fine. You're disrupting my research. I start poking his helmet. <laughs> You find yourself um, distracted. Can somebody close the, the window? <laughs> <laughs> a breeze. A very angry, annoying <laughs> breeze, you understand. Um, but yes, I will. Uh, Do sit you need down space there. or anything for this? Is there anything I can do can it here. Uh, perhaps a bowl of water, uh, but uh, that would be it. Uh, one of the uh, warriors moves off um, and comes back in a couple of. Uh, a minute with a, a container of water, fresh water. Um, slightly sweet. It's close enough, probably. Um, also, another drone appears. Um, this drone will stay with you. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm going to use this because I still have a bunch of salt from the last time I did this. Because uh, it requires like 25 gold worth of something appropriate. So I will use up the rest of the salt. Okay. Uh, for that, pour it into the water until it. So you pour this big uh, bag of salt and dump it into the water. Yeah. It's very, very uh, um, uh, salt, uh, very, very salty because yeah. it's a sturdy amount of, of uh, salt. Yeah, it probably kind of super saturates with salt. This Same kind of way that you can do it with sugar. Yeah. Uh, except he doesn't put anything in it, so it's still kind of on that edge. Um, and then uh, he will. Uh, Sit and uh, meditate and uh, pray to Paluxia. Um, that'd be a longer chant because it takes a minute to do this, mm -hmm. but it'd be something along the lines of asking Paluxia uh, for guidance and uh, uh, and information. Um, the Queen is intently observing all of this. I've never seen anything like this before, clearly. Um, 
And I get three yes or no questions. So you're casting commune, I think it is? Yes. Okay. That's my last remaining spell slot, which is level five. Okay. Does anything weird happen? Or does that happen once I get... Uh, um, there is something weird that happens, but not perhaps in the way that you expect. Okay. Um, I was hoping we'd all get like vulnerable to piercing damage. No, <laughs> no. Is it still in wild magic area? Um, you, you... I don't know. Um, sort of rest and relax and open yourself up to try to catch that sound, almost of running water, like a waterfall, which you've topped into a little bit before. It's difficult because you can still hear, and when you quiet yourself, the overbearing sound of the hum itself. Mm. And you try to push it to the side and reach, and kind of almost feel yourself reaching the surface of it to allow it to flow in. And a cold sensation runs through your body, like sitting under a fresh waterfall. Oh, yeah. It is very, very relaxing. Um, and you, you open yourself up one of the first things that you sense, even before you begin to to mentally recite your questions, is resonance. There is an echo that you feel within your soul, as though this waterfall is draining elsewhere as well. You've never felt that before. Hmm. Well, uh, say, um, Lady Paluxia, there is, s it, whatever direction it was from the hive, I'm assuming It was off to the west is where the, where the yeah. tower was, so. Uh, to the west is an entity of some sort, small and green which lived in a almost magical uh, forested area, or jungle area, that these uh, wasp people, maybe you did hear the term Vespari, I don't know if they actually... They have said it since. Uh, the it Vespari sense. are afraid of. Can you tell me if this entity is demonic? Yes or no? I don't actually say the yes or no. I'm just you can respond. Just, to just, well, just to, you know, <laughs> is it a reminder that right. that's all you right. give yes. me is yes or no? Is it demonic? Yeah, that's what I asked. It's a, <laughs> is it demonic? The response you get is confusing. Um, there is a surge in the sensation of the waterfall, which flows more quickly but the water turns warm and painful and the response you get is yes and no hmm okay am i hearing all of this by the way or? no okay. You heard, oh, you're hearing the chanting yeah. that he did before, and then he suddenly gets. Stuck. Yeah, I mean, I've got a certain amount of time as well. I think I like a minute or ten minutes or something for the questions, so I can be it. She said it, it, it is and is not demonic. Um, the sensation of the draining from another location, of the, of the waterfall being drained elsewhere, increases. Like mm. an echo. Is this feeling of draining anything to do with this entity? Yes. Very, very strong response. Is this entity your enemy? At that, it is as though the echo is beside you. And you hear a peal of laughter, beautiful, light, somewhat feminine. And the answer, once again, is yes and no. And then it ends. And then it fades from you. 
you find yourself in a cold sweat. Hmm. Arun, what are you okay. doing? What, what did you just cast? I was communing with uh, Lady Paluxia. Oh, what did you have to say? Well, uh, one, the entity is and is not demonic. Mm-hmm. Two, uh, it seemed connected to her or communing with her in a way similar to what I was doing. And when I asked her if it was her enemy, it suddenly felt right next to me, gave a, a lilting evil laugh, and she said yes and no. Let me guess, the green goddess? I should have asked that, but that would have been a fourth question. Um, I turned back into myself, sitting on, I assume there was like a bed or something. There's not really much for furniture, the cocoon kind of was formed around the table where you had left him before. Okay, then I just turned to myself standing then. Okay, um, uh, the queen kind of looks over at you quizzically. Um, like, we need to rest. If that's the case, then we yeah. really need to rest. We can't really battle a goddess. <laughs> One, we can't really battle a goddess, but two... I have to decipher these runes as also. I don't you think it... You need just woke to get up away. I'm tired. I don't think that the it helmet. was ding, a ding. It goddess, works. but it might be one of the other avatars. Um, sure, I, player Hive can defeat her. Yeah. Oh, question for the GM. <laughs> um, as a lay follower of Marius, mm-hmm. uh, what does the what does the faith have to say about possession? Make a religion roll. <laughs> Untrained. If that's all right. Sure. Uh, I think it's nine. Nine? Yeah. What does the Marius believe in protection? Or or possession, sorry? Yeah. Uh, Just as far as, like, debts and favors and things being owed and boons. There's a common expression that gets attributed to some of Marius' teachings. Okay. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Right. Which means, uh, given the, the, the trickery nature of Marius, um... A deal is only bad if it breaks. Right. But ownership is is possession. Okay. Now that's not out and out stealing from other people necessarily, mm. and your interpretation gets a little fuzzier at that point, um, because Marius often would be referred to as the patron of thieves. Right. But. Uh, what was the context of your question again? So the, the possession, as in, um, as in, uh, s- selling one's soul, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and uh, s- sort of the terms of of an, uh, a religious or spiritual uh, bondage. Okay, um, Marius, uh, from the teachings that you've heard, and kind of again the lay preachings from the, some of the debt collectors you, you've dealt with. Mm. Um, it is fine to obligate yourself to another as long as you are getting something out of it. Right. And as long as the as long as you believe that the terms are either fair or as fair as you can make them. Right. Sometimes you have to make them unfair to get more. Um, however, um, if you lose your soul to someone, then you are the fool. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm not sure I can translate that to the conversation, <laughs> but thank you. If you'll oh. excuse me, there are reports coming in that I must attend to. Be careful. I'll let you know as soon as I figure out these rooms. And she walks over to you and looks down, and there's a gentle tapping on the lead helmet. You, <laughs> you should take care. It would would be unfortunate if you were lost. Lost to what? Anything. And there is a look that the rest of you see pass from the queen, although Zach is a little oblivious to it. There is a fondness that she expresses towards him. All the chicks dig Zach. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I literally have a list of dates that he's been on. (laughs) (laughs) May, you mentioned 
yesterday a reward. Ah, so when it, yes. not that I, I mean, not that we need money at the moment or anything, but in your treasure hold, there may be items that you or we could use. Uh, it may be a good idea to look at those. I see. I do not know which ones are of value other than those that are the strongest and can cut the best. They are unfamiliar to us. We do not know these powers as you do. Um, Got you covered after this. Yeah, we could... He, he can identify what, what magic items can do. Um, Is he all right to do such things? He's I think for now, but he does need to rest. So. Right now, you know, sort of uh, yeah, you're I making see. notes after notes on, on the notepad and kind of like trying to line them up in different ways and the different... You notice that the, the, the symbols are different uh, number of symbols on each of the different ones. They do seem to be labeling the spigots, though. Do I have to make an end roll to figure it out? Once the time is up, yes. Um... Oh, more about my yes. I think if you need to, then the drone here can lead you there. Yeah, I mean, I, at least, I mean, we could look at some of the things and see if there, there might be something to help us, because if this entity is your enemy as well as the enemy of Polexia, then know. it should be dealt with. Um, you hear someone hollering coming down the hallway. Um... It is a familiar voice of one Captain Sara. Uh, let me through. I have to see her. I have to see the queen. Hello. Um, and she kind of the, the queen gestures and the, the, the large uh, warriors move out of the way, letting her through. And my queen, she drops one to, to one knee. I'm sorry to disturb you, but some of the reports are coming in, and we've seen something. Small, uh, a humanoid figure looked female. We couldn't get very close, but we have spy glasses. We were able to steal some things back from the ship. Oh, the hobgoblin ship is gone, by the way. It's no longer lift uh, living in the bay. Uh, sorry, I'm getting out of, out of order. Uh, she seems to... The jungle seems alive around her. She doesn't seem to be moving far. Still over the ridge, beyond, uh, in toward the west, looking for something, I think. That's what some of the drones described it. And some of our people who were carried aloft and could look through the spy, spy glass saw it as well. They felt strange, though. Uh, calm, which was very strange in the wake of it. I think Polexio was trying to guide us there. Is she looking for this? I'll hold up the artifact. I have no idea what she was looking for. I don't even know what that is. Neither do I, yet. Uh, is he okay? As, no. as she's, again, kind of the, the, the raging rambling that, that he's actually yep. what Zach is speaking at. He's no. going full Salazar. Never go full Salazar. <laughs> Only half um. Salazar, thank you very much. And well, it comes out of Salahaf. Salahaf. <laughs> Tal Salazar. Because I'm 6'6 six, six now. How am I going to cosplay this? I don't know. Yeah. It is strange to notice that Zach is, is still that height. Mm. And your beard is still looking elegant. I'd like to think um, that it like shows in my wild shape. <laughs> there'd probably be some reflection of it, yeah. <laughs> So when you turn into an eagle, you can the be like an eagle bearded wizard. eagle. Yeah. <laughs> bearded eagle. <laughs> well, if she's not moving fast or much, we may have time to rest first. I can lend Zacchaeus this. What is it? It'll make me vulnerable. What is to it? To the hum. It's my ring that gives me advantage on wisdom saves. Oh. Does it need attunement? It does. That means I need to unattune something of mine. However, what's the, what's the well, ring actually called? So we have uh, a little the, canon uh, in in world. <laughs> in world, it's called the Ring of Inspiration. Okay. Uh, it gives me advantage on uh, wisdom saves. It also would 
take away one point of my wisdom, but that's okay because I'm at, a, at an odd number. Um, well, but it would make me vulnerable to the hum. Well, I mean, I don't know how vulnerable either of us is right now. I haven't felt it impinge on me anymore after we entered. Um, however, yeah, I mean, it, uh, you'd probably have to drop one of your attunements. Mm -hmm. But, uh, After I figured out the cipher, I've almost got it. Yeah. Um, plus, I mean, right now he's pretty much useless, uh, until he I heard leaves. that. That's fine. Get I out of here. You're, 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 you're interfering no. with my research. Roll perception at disadvantage, dude. Because <laughs> he doesn't need to talk very loud. He uh -huh. just I don't hear shit. Yeah. <laughs> he just needs you're to also gross. You're at, you're, so you're, I'm, you're I'm glad I rolled this dice because it rolled a uh -huh. one. Now it's going away. Because you're at disadvantage for everything yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Including saves. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back out and see if I can find out more. The queen moves over to Zara and gently puts her hand along her beside her face. Zara seems in uh, in awe of her. Um, go and be safe. I will. And she stands up and runs out. Um, I don't know if that helps you at all, but at least we have some idea. I think I may know who it is, but I won't be for certain until I can ask... Alexia again, which I cannot do until I have rested. I see. Then um, you should rest. I can arrange for better rooms to be removed uh, from the isolation. Um, I can, I, I can rest up in the uh, uh, the equipment room. I oh, do not need much. There is much. no place to rest there. It is a I, bare, sparse room. I merely need to meditate. Interesting. Um, I do not have to sleep. Uh, and do you all need such do. a thing? And Ira's uh, like, no, I need to sleep. Yes, the uh, only Elzera and Paul's myself. Paul's already asleep on the side. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty much exhausted after all what he's gone through. So um, he gets all his HP back. Um, no, it's not on a long rest yet. Don't wake um, up. But <laughs> the, the others, the, the, the non-Vespari who had retained their minds and who wish to leave, could they be brought together? Because if things go wrong, I would like to get them away from here uh, before whatever goes wrong happens. You are already predicting some doom. This makes me some bit of concern. I am preparing for the possibility. We have not seen this invader before, but we have. And she kind of flutters her wings slightly, and you get her, you notice that her shoulders kind of square a little bit. There's a bit of pride going into her voice. We have fought back many who have tried to take our territory. Certainly. And I am hopeful and fairly certain that you could defend this against anyone, le uh, anyone below a, a god or an avatar. Uh, but if that uh, if we prove unable to stop her i do not want innocence left in danger i would rather prepare for bad things that may happen than not prepare i see i will have them isolated and placed in a different area from those that are loyal they can be brought to us if it makes things easier. It would not. Okay. Uh, now other than that, I must just, uh, attend to the other reports and make sure my patrols are ready for whatever may come. She turns and the yep. the drone the uh, the warriors move with her as well. Once again, can keeping her well ensconced. That one drone is standing there though. Uh, looking somewhat uh, attentive, uh, trying to figure out what what is needed. Um, you get the very much sense of, of uh, do you need anything? Do you need anything? Do you need anything? I'm here. Do you need anything? From him as well. Um, 
Now, unless I'm mistaken, um, I mean, identify is one way of learning what an item does, but mm -hmm. attempting to attune with it is the other. Yes. Uh, assuming it's an attunable thing. Okay. Um, I mean, we could go up there and you could attempt to attune to some of the magical weapons or armor to see what you they You also do. have the dagger you pulled from the uh, tower as well. There's a dagger and a ring. Yes. Um, and I will give you the arrow of the Vespari right up. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So or if you'd rather, uh, nice if, if you'd yeah. rather start resting now, because we have no idea how long it will take her to get here, uh, up that to could you. work as well. Um, all I can really do up there is see what kind of magic might be in it, or what things are magic and what things aren't. Um, I also, arm, we should. I could arm the human citizens. Uh, yeah, that would be the other thing: is arming the non-Vespari here with whatever we find there. I know Iroh very much liked the pole or pole arm that, uh, the spear that uh, was there. If you want me to do that, I can do that. Um, I'll rest there. Sure. Then, Clark uh, would like to go to the treasury. Okay. I'll go as well. Really, it's kind of their junk room, but yeah. to us, it's a treasury. <laughs> Especially since she said, I don't know. I don't really have anything to do with those small coin things and whatnot. If you want them, it's like one racist <laughs> trash is our party's treasure. Well, she wasn't going to give you them all, but she's less concerned about those. And seeing that you really want them does mm -hmm. make it a little more interesting for her. All right. You can help me figure out the magic things. Yeah. Not really, but <laughs> I can. I can be emotional support. Yay! I can. The thing. Yes, you're figuring out the scribbles on thing. it. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Shane, can you keep an eye on him for a bit more? Yes, yes. If I have to. Leave. So it sounds like we're going to do half research, half rest, I guess. All right. Until, until we can't do any more. Yeah. I mean, basically, I, I'm going to go up there, use a uh, uh, magic findy thing there, magic site. Identify? Detect magic. No, nope, not, yeah, magic. detect magic. <laughs> You're the only one who can identify. He's sounding a lot like, um, uh, like Zach is pretty yeah. well. Um, to see what's magic. And then after that, I mean, I'll do a little light work of organizing things or whatnot, and then meditate for four hours. Um, okay. So yes, that's my plan for the near future. So we're gonna make a couple of random rolls. Hey, looking at squiggies. Uh, I'm very nice that. Wow, where'd the table go? Come back to me, table. The table's right here. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. And we're yes. about uh, five minutes to break as well, Mark. Yep. Well, why don't we take a break then? Um, that'll give us a chance to, to rest and relax, get a little cool water splash in their faces. Sounds and good. then uh, we'll be back with the uh, revelation of what you find in the treasure tower and also a revelation of what you possibly have figured out. Hopefully. We'll be back in a couple See of minutes. See you later. And we're back, somewhat refreshed, hopefully, and... Uh, putting aside bad jokes and terrible <laughs> memories of uh, cat problems. Uh, as we resume, tension in the hive is building. But within, you had some different things to do. Some of you were going to take a look upstairs and see what might be of use in the treasure room. Others were still working on the deciphering of the strange cipher around this. What you had heard um, between the two uh, the hobgoblin and the tiefling one of them used the word alembic it's one, of the, one of the words that was described as the, the thing itself did any of them relay this to me? and how do you I spell it? Sure. A-L-E-M-B-I-C yeah. A-L-E-M-B-I-C um, so who's doing what just so we have it close treasure room, treasure room. I think us three went to the treasure artifact. room artifact near the artifact we All left right. him alone with Shank with Shank right and Iroh uh, and snoring and Paul, yeah. Uh, Iroh is going to kind of wanted to keep guard anyway, 
because mm. she couldn't get into the treasure room, if you recall, the last time. Well, not, not the way we went in. Yeah. We have another door now. Um, well, are you going to signal to the drone that you need a lift? Oh, yeah, right. It's got if I recall the correctly, room. the earth elemental kind of like tore a hole through the treasure oh, room yes. and the next room, so I remember. There was no other room beyond the treasure room. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing connecting the treasure room to the rest of the hive was that tunnel we came up through. Okay, so. Well, yeah, because you have to fly. It was connected in the queen's right. level, uh -huh. and then the, the tunnel that was, that was carved yep. upward. That's right. Okay. So Ira wouldn't be able to go up there anyway. Okay. Christmas. So are you going up through the tunnel, or are you going to ask the drone to... Probably the tunnel, then. That makes okay. sense. Right. As long as it hasn't grown back, because it was giving a, a look that it started to reseal. But mm. yeah. Hopefully that's slow. Um, and part of that, um, going through a second time and not having to rush and not having to be secret about it, taking a little bit closer look, you notice that it, it does regrow slowly. Um, so probably the, the carving out of this tunnel would have taken a very long time to do. Mm. They had had plans in motion for some time because this was the back entrance into the Queen's, uh, the queen's chambers. I get that feeling. Drilling into the bottom of this was a pain in the butt. It took me several minutes with my power drill. Okay then. <laughs> um, drill. Until you get inside, then it's easy to drill through. Okay. Um, it's just weird, weird material. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, and you imagine it would have been difficult to drilling through this space as well, mm. because the material is very, very hard. Again, kind of a consistent material. And, uh, it's it's a little bit unnerving to note that the same tone of color it runs from the food all the way through to the walls, to the, you know, the, the, the more membranous uh, entrances, uh, except when it grows tr super dark, where the, the actual chitin of the of the warriors for example or now of the queen uh, is seen you make your way up there and as you recall it was dim there's no light in this particular space it doesn't have an external entrance um, do you have something to illuminate the area torches yeah um go ahead. I have so torches in my bag of holding I have a drift globe, but I'm not there. No, nope. no. Nope. We had a lamp last time. I don't remember. I don't we think we have any that, oil left for it because it didn't have a lot of oil in it. Hmm. I think you picked that up in the tower. Yeah. yeah. And it only had yeah, a very yeah. small amount of oil left. Mm. Um. Alternatively, yeah. you do know the queen's room is not far away and has those large open doors. Mm. Um, I mean, there's yeah, also a I huge mean, hole currently. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll use. Well, there's a hole in the floor. The doors are are, are been the, patched the earth back up again. Yeah, yeah back the doors have been patched have been back up again. Okay. Um, Considering the queen has now moved into that residence, she wants to make sure that's that's safe. Uh, I will press to digitate like a glowing symbol somewhere for a little bit of ambient light. Okay. Other than that, I'll just go with night night vision, okay. dark vision. Um, it is extraordinarily dark, and even that doesn't really give much more than than you know within a few feet. Yeah. Um, so you're really dealing with rough shapes here. Mm -hmm. So uh, if each you wants to make an investigation roll with disadvantage, I take out a torch. I have torches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Clark does too. Okay. He'll light one. As you well. fight out, fire up a torch. You can light up the entire place. Um, I can't. It, the I room don't. kind of glints when you do so, as there I there are just piles of gold, um, as well as numerous little things uh, popping in and out. So, make an investigation roll for the three of you. Yeah. Uh, well, first I'm going to ritually cast Detect Magic. Okay. So Takes ten we, minutes. We knew that was the plan. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys can look around if you want to. There might be something interesting. Yeah. But it'll take me a little while before I can go. Nine? Okay. Without the use of... Without any benefits beyond Not having 20. fire. Woo. Not 20, okay. Um, and yourself as well? Okay, it's just after, I assume, I get the mm -hmm. magic... Okay. Um, you can't see through things with that, so you won't see no. anything unless it's exposed. But anything that's magical, I'll just set it aside as I mm -hmm. find as you it. see it. Yep. Ooh, that's a two plus a five is a seven. Okay. There are no magic items in here. Yeah. I've lost the two that I found before. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're 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 looking through, and you're kind of getting a little distracted because there are literally just piles of gold here. The disturbing part about that is that this is a lot of gold, which meant a lot of people died here. Um, they had been harvesting people for who knows how long uh -huh. uh, and taking their things. 
Um, and so you kind of get that in your mind, and it's hard to get that out of your mind. And around you, sitting on the, uh, around the room, the one thing that you do see that glows is the spear that you had handed to mm. uh, Iro before. That is glowing yeah. with uh, adjuration magic. Okay, that's transmutation. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of faint. It doesn't really have a particular mm. color to it. It's glowing with magic. Um, it's glowing with a little bit of magic. Uh, Clark, um, you're kind of scrabbling through, and it is a lot of gold. It's true. Um, it's just sort of sitting there. Yeah, it is. We, should, um, we should offer to invest you it for them. Run across a a, 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 a torn doublet. Okay. Uh, looks like it was just sort of ripped off of the body in a careful way, and you flash back to being downstairs mm. in the dissection room where they would take whatever it was, mm. break it down to its small bits and pieces, throw away the stuff they didn't need. Um, this may have been on someone's body, or maybe, uh, in fact, you find that there's a small, shiny brooch yeah. attached to it, uh, which is probably why it ended up here. Let's wrap that up and put it in a pack somewhere. Okay, pull that aside. Um, you do find there are uh, uh, about six swords plain, ordinary swords, uh, ranging from uh, an ornate sword. One of them does look like it's got some shiny gems on it. Okay. Uh, that one's probably worth a little bit more. Uh, the rest, though, seem like they're kind of average. You suspect that it was probably cell swords or something, or a guard that was with some others. Um, you, th you find all the way down as you kind of keep digging and setting the swords aside, um, noting that the last few of them are kind of rusted and bent and probably had been there for years, mm -hmm. decades even, maybe, um, and probably represent, again, some age that you're seeing kind of reflected in this, this gold. Right. Um, and you start tying, some, uh, pulling some things aside and kind of find a pair of shoes and toss those aside, and you notice the, show, the shoes glow uh, blue with transmutation magic as it kind of tosses them over your shoulder because it's a pair of slippers, who cares? Uh, meanwhile, I'll put those Alzera, in a pile. Is, is kind of digging around um, and you find a, a vest where the leather has all almost uh, entirely uh, uh, rotted away but nestled within that vest are several small vials uh, they would be glowing with probably abjuration magic and how many is several? Um, four in total that are intact you see that a few more were, were there but had broken. Nobody seemed to have paid much attention to them, so they kind of got tossed into a corner. And it's only because the leather was of a high quality when it was still new that it even cushioned the impact. Uh, you recognize the style of uh, vest. It's not very different from one your father wears, um, where he has the ability to store samples or to store um, small vials of potions as he's traveling. Not an entirely dissimilar style to the one he gave you, Although that was just a bandolier. Um, you that mine is a belt, actually. I thought it was a bandolier. Okay. No, well, just belt. Enough. They're the same thing. Uh, no, a bandolier goes around your shoulders, <laughs> belt goes around your waist. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. If you put a belt around your shoulders, it becomes it's a, a belt. Bandolier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> uh, you find a rather gruesome find. Mm -hmm. As you find a pair of hands, the bones still being in them, looks like the the uh, lower arm was shattered and broken to take them off. And there's still a pair of fairly pristine looking gloves uh, sitting on them. Uh, as you bring them to explosion, you find that they have abjuration magic on them, or rather, uh, Amun notes that they glow slightly. Um, you find a small clay pot, cracked but intact. It has a stopper on top, um, and you can hear some sort of dust inside. Nothing seems to be magical, but it may also be because you can't see inside the actual mm. thing itself. Mm. Um, and you find a small scroll case with two scrolls inside. Mm -hmm. I'm not there, but... <sighs> um, do you open up the scroll case? Look yeah. inside? The paper looks extraordinarily delicate. As you start to fish it out, or I'm gonna leave it in there? Um, I'm going to flip it and try to gently do it that okay. way. Make a sleight of hand roll. That's pretty good. It's probably something powerful. Can Clark be of assistance? 
It's a spell scroll. Mm -hmm. So they can. Probably so can make it with advantage. So if it does, it's not a spell scroll. It could be like but yes. Scroll. Oh yeah. No, we don't want that. Uh, right. Fourteen. Fourteen. So you very gingerly uh, uh, sort of let it fall into your hand. There's a, a moment where your breath catches as, as a piece of the paper was torn slightly and caught on the inner lip of this uh, of this case. The leather case was probably really, really fancy, and you can actually see where there were sockets and probably gems were in the sockets, but those have all been carefully picked out. And you actually noted, and kind of helping her out, notice the little knife marks where someone had very, very aggressively pulled the uh, the gems off. Um, and you unroll them to discover they are, in fact, spell scrolls. Um, make an arcana roll to identify them. It's a ten. Ten? You're not sure what the first one is. Let me try for the other one. Another ten. Yeah, it's unfamiliar to you. I don't learn spells this way. This makes yeah. no sense. But even kind of understanding it, the, the, the font is very thick, and uh, it's not written in a way that you would understand a spell or, or thing to be done. Uh, and that is what you find around the room. Um, there was a set of chain mail that had evocation magic that I had put back. Oh, you put it back. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you find that as well. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so there's the spear that Iroh had. Mm -hmm. Lots of gold. The brooch. Uh, six swords, one ornate, the rest are meh. Shoes with transmutation magic. Vest that had the four potions. A pair of hands with gloves. Uh, the cracked pot and the scroll case and the chain. So there's a brooch? He found. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, Clark will produce the doublet and brooch. Oh, brooch. Okay. This looks important. Yeah. The doublet is kind of torn and shredded, but the was, the brooch was still the brooch was still attached to it, which is probably why it ended up here and not just being tossed. Uh, does it have magic as well? No. Okay. Is there any and uh, the ornate sword that he had found? Any magic in no. that? Okay, just gemmed. Is there any particular uh, uh, standard attached to the doublet? As far as colors, and nothing the remains. Go. Yeah, it's it's really quite shredded does and faded. The, does the brooch have any particular character upon it? Uh, make a history roll. Sure. Uh, six. Six. It's not familiar to you. Okay. I'll keep it anyway. Might be useful for a disguise later. Mm. So I guess can um, identify so much of these things later <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> if he's not dead. <laughs> um, the small clay pot is it sealed? Yep. Yeah, there's still a uh, a a. Uh, a uh, cork on the top and wax around the edge of the cork. Mm. Okay, uh, there is a large that, crack okay. on the side, though, but it seems, seems not to uh, let anything out yet. I oh, cast okay. mending on the crack. Okay, the crack <laughs> seals up. Because it stresses me out. <laughs> I'm going to save that for later in case it's something one use or something. Uh, I will take a look at the scrolls that she found. Okay, make an arcana roll. <laughs> I don't get these. Well, I got a 12 the first one. Okay. We're not really familiar with it. Um, it's better than a 10. They yes. aren't labeled, and that's why yep. you're kind of making their kind of rules. And a 14 for the second one. 14? The other one seems to speak to you a little bit, and as you sort of examine it closer, um, you see part of a Paluxian prayer. Oh. It is a spell called Bless. Ah, okay. Bless. Um, looking at the paper, uh, it's in terrible shape. Mm -hmm. uh, the fabric of the paper is worn around the edges, which for most magical spell scrolls, they don't necessarily age terribly badly, mm -hmm. uh, indicating this is very, very old. Hmm. Um, I wish I had a camera. <laughs> um, I'll roll them back out. It, I don't know what the first one is. The second one looks like it's a, a, a low-level bless spell but very old. I mean, this might be from when... I mean, considering she hasn't had any followers in a thousand years, uh, I mean, this may date back to that period. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, well, it's also a free uh, scroll as well, so it's not usable by anyone but me. Um, well... Uh, 
I mean, I'm going to, I think I'll just probably meditate first, maybe, and then start organizing stuff after, but I don't think there's much else we can do. I mean, Zachis is the only one who can really identify stuff, yeah. unless uh, can I you want to try on the chain mail to see what it does. Uh, I'm sure it protects you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it also has evocation magic in it. So it Hold protects you still. well? I don't know. Maybe it maybe on command it emits fireballs. It sounds dangerous. Yes. And doesn't it? It's probably best not to leave it to me then. <laughs> yes, but we're the only two who can wear it. Uh, so if uh, I can try it later. Like maybe I should. Uh, I'm gonna try to gather up all the mundane uh, weaponry okay. and uh, see about having it distributed to the the, the bipedal uh, one of the swords parts. you feel would be worse to have than not Okay, uh, it's in terrible shape, it's right. very rusted out if it could be repaired maybe mm-hmm. um, but it's very very old, the style you've a sort of simple style you've never really run across before either okay um, but the rest of the swords, there's, there are a couple of mundane sets of armor rusted out, uh, but still could be usable. Okay. Well, we'll get all that together for the for the human uh, citizens of okay. the hive. I can help him with that. Okay. I'm good at finding random weapons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you collect all that together. Okay. Um. Yeah. Clark, uh, Clark doesn't take any money. Okay. I, mm-hmm. Yet. Um. How like how big is this room? Uh, it's probably about uh, 20 feet wide by about 30 feet long. Okay. Um, one, uh, I'm going to go through and kind of push all the piles of money into like a flatter, wider area just in case there's anything hiding in them. If you're going to roll I around in the money? <laughs> <laughs> no. Dive in like Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Actually, just the once. <laughs> um but just, to, I mean, her natural 20 would have found everything, but he would have mm. checked just to make sure there wasn't something like another. Make a perception check. Yeah. Natural 1. Do I make 1 when he's doing that? Uh, nope, nope, it's because he's, he's touching all that stuff. Um, so yes, I okay. perceived nothing. Okay. Um, or exactly the wrong thing. Who knows? Mm-hmm. In this particular case, you observe that there are there is gold, there is silver, and there is bronze. Or even a few electrum pieces, which no one uses much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they were a currency that probably uh, hundreds of years ago was common. Uh, yeah, or if a place happens to have an electrum mine, then it might use that. Well, electrum's not mined; but it's it's made. It's ah. an amalgam. So, okay. um, and you'd know that much as well. Um, so it's kind of strange just to find them because you've not seen them in circulation mm-hmm. anywhere you've been. Well. Then I will meditate on a pile of money. You do estimate that there's several thousand gold. Uh, yeah, that's what I was figuring. So, um, if possible, if we have a moment, Clark's mm-hmm. going to take one of his own gold coins. Okay. And swap it in the pile with another one that looks particularly old and foreign. Okay. Yeah. Uh, make an investigation check as you kind of look around. All right. What you doing, Clark? <laughs> Just looking at something. <laughs> uh, investigations. That's an I. Uh, so a grand total of seven. Okay. Because who needs to know anything? You're kind of looking around. A lot of them are pretty, pretty simple. Um, you see stamps from uh, from a queen. You see stamps from a number of different islands. Okay. Uh, one catches your eye. It's got a head on one side, uh, and none of the other coins seem to be minted with a, a personage. Hmm. Um, and it looks particularly old, roughed up. The head is almost almost faded off at this point. Okay. Um, Clark will make no secret that he's taking one coin from the pile and replacing one of his own coins to the pile. So there's a there's a net there's no net loss or gain. Okay. Mm-hmm. He just wants something cool. <laughs> and he puts that old coin in his dead box. Souvenir. Oh, okay. And that's it. Did you sleep? Um. You step, you, you kind of drop it in the deck box, you yep. step up, you hear clanking in the deck box. It's still there. Hmm. I'll, leave it, I'll leave it sealed. Okay. Sometimes it needs to buffer. <laughs> <laughs> Loading. 
you you know that there's magic affecting stuff in the area, so um So Clark has been told. <laughs> okay. I am going to do a commune with nature after all of that. Um, okay. where? Where I go to sleep. <laughs> um, There's no nature to be seen anywhere <laughs> around here. the metal that people make. <laughs> and you are a few hundred feet up. Um, I'm going to ask if there's a way for me to get to the ground. Who are you going to ask? Our guide. We have an interpreter. The drone? The drone guide. Okay. Um, the drone looks at you a little confused because there's always a way to get to the ground, but uh, leads you into the queen's chamber. And kind of gestures towards the large open uh, <laughs> portals that are there. Well, to be fair, that's probably the only way to the outside world. Yeah. Um, you can see now that storm clouds are once again uh, brewing outside. That's not good. There's a cold wind that blows in, which is rather refreshing, if a little chilling at the same time. Um, I currently cannot fly. Oh, you've got open skies. I'm sure that's probably enough. I mean. Technically, open skies aren't nature either. <laughs> it's what's under them that is. You can go pester Ryan's Zach. Clark's not a spell. druid. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah, I'm going. I need to be on the ground, and See. I cannot fly. <laughs> okay. It goes. So, no, 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 no. Um. So the the drone. Um, Uh, kind of starts to lead you over towards the opening as if you don't seem to understand. I'll walk towards it. Okay. Um, and then it kind of steps out and starts flapping its wings and just sort of raises its arms, gesturing towards the ground. Jump on. <laughs> I currently don't have anything I can do if I fall. You saw somebody, one of your compatriots, fly before, right? If there's a spell for that. It looks confused at you and. I don't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> sort of tilts its head at you, then flies straight at you. Um, and grabs a hold of you. Oh. I'll let it happen. And leaps out the window. So, is it strong enough to hold you? This is the question that you maybe should have asked before. Because <laughs> uh, it's trying to oblige as best as, best as it can. And you natural ones. kind of leap out towards the edge, and there's this sickening feeling as your stomach drops out from, it, from you. Um, oh, yeah, and you see the And you see the ground coming at you very rapidly. Uh, and you can also hear the, the, the wings beating very, very furiously behind you. Um, it's not looking good right now, uh, as it seems like it's it's realized perhaps that it's made a mistake. <laughs> oh right, what do I have? Uh, um, it I starts to try to go back in towards the uh, the hive, yeah. but then it kind of bounces against the wall because that entrance has been closed. Uh, so it's like. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, I am going to, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's at trying least to get, it's I'm trying to get a different uh, angle on it, and you feel the wind kind of pick up a little bit, okay. and it kind of goes, floop, and it inverts accidentally, as you feel it now heading head first now towards the ground. Oh, I'm going to cast Gu Guardian of Nature on myself. As a giant tree, it gives me 10 hit points. <laughs> you turn into a giant tree? No, it, 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 it's my skin starts to appear barky. I. Okay. Oh, okay. So it, do, it does nothing but make me look different. Okay, okay. Uh, um, it just gives, gives me 10... It, it screams out in fright and drops you. <laughs> not quite, not quite. Try, try not to narrate for me, please, because I, I don't want to ruin the moment. Uh, um, so he's got plans for this. <laughs> okay. Uh... It seems a little bit concerned by this, but there's more concern of, of the rapidly encroaching ground. Yep. Uh, it does manage to invert once again, uh, and you uh, feel it kind of flutter out its wings and stop beating them, as if trying to catch as much of the breeze as possible, which might be a technique if you were just a Vespari, but you're a lot heavier than a Vespari. That's something you're also noticing is it's really light. Yeah. Um, 
as uh, you start to approach the ground, um, you hear, which is strange because they don't make much noise, but you hear some sort of frustrations from it. Uh, you can also hear its wings starting to tear slightly. Um, I'm and you ready get to yell help. A, there's a, there's a, as you yell help, there's a gust of, of smell that comes from uh, it as it is emitting <laughs> like crazy at the moment. Make a constitution saving throw. An advantage? Nope. No, oh, right. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, you get you huff in a, a bundle of this as you go to yell and <laughs> to keep yourself from sneezing um, as another feather flies off from your beard, uh, which is fluttering gracefully in the wind <laughs> at the moment. Up there. <laughs> um, oh, there goes a green one. <laughs> is it multicolored? It is multicolored. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, you didn't. You didn't see the. Oh wait, did you see the? Oh yeah, no, you I did. Yeah, I just okay. thought it was like all, right. all white or something. It's no, like no, it's down to my knees and multicolored. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was down to your knees. I just didn't know like it was multicolored. Um, you see one of its wings suddenly buckle under the wind. Oh, no. uh, I cast healing word on it. Okay. Uh, at level three because that's what I have left. Okay. Uh, it heals eight. In fright, you kind of yell out this word. Make another Constitution saving throw. Ten. Ten. This time, as you yell it, yell it out, it's right in its face, and it kind of turns to you in fright. And this, this horrible concentration of of uh, of uh, kind of a pollen-like pheromone wafts over your face, and you sneeze, and you and for a moment you think, "Oh my God, I've exploded!" As you and it are covered. <laughs> in a cloud of feathers as the beard falls away. <laughs> um, you're looking at the ground in some concern as it's rapidly moving towards you. Um, you do hear the sound of other droning wings, and you can see two pairs of warriors that are moving this way. They're kind of cut up close, however. What do you do in this instant? I literally can do nothing. I don't... Because we didn't have... An hour. You haven't rested. We haven't rested, so I can do absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, I have <laughs> I have my ten hit points. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yep. That's all I can do. I okay. Think. Um, as its other wing, healed by the healing word, starts to flutter now much more desperately, um, you feel it let go of you. Mm -hmm. um, as it kind of moves very quickly away from you, very, very light. It is evil, easily able mm -hmm. to, to stabilize, but you are plummeting towards the ground. Um, you see one of the uh, two uh, pairs of, uh, of warrior Vespari um, going down to try to dive, but they're unable to fold in their wings enough to get enough speed. The other pair uh, seem to... Uh, uh, figure out some way of doing that. They're folding in their wings, they're desperately falling for you. Um, one of them grabs onto one of your arms, try to grab it back, make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, which... wait a second. And they do have arm or hands as being the, the warrior type. Yes, I just want to make sure... No, that's... Ah, whatever, I don't have... That. Um... Do, 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 do. That is a 17. 17. You reach desperately up as you're falling backwards, kind of angling. And this is strange for you. You've flown a number of times. And this is the most free form you've ever tried. Not necessarily intentionally. <laughs> uh, as it manages to grab onto one of your arms and start to haul you back, you start to spin because the, of the force of it almost jerking your, your shoulder out of joint. The other one's going to try to make a uh, drab for you, but it's having a tougher time. Ooh, it's going to be up to you. Oh, that's a total 20. Okay. Uh, as it falls short, you grasp onto its wrist, uh, wrist desperately, uh, and you feel the two of them pulling. It's coming right to the ground. You're looking down straight at the ground as the two of them are kind of holding you back up, and you see that first small drone, now no longer burdened with you, can move very, very quickly, and it moves underneath you, and you collide with it. It's messy as you can feel its small, thin body crushing underneath your weight. But with the two, drone, two uh, warriors pulling back on you, it is 
slowed down enough that you are taking only three bludgeoning points or three points of bludgeoning damage. But the drone uh, that tried to help you and didn't really understand what it was getting into, um, you feel its life giving way as it looks up. And there's a moment when you look into its multifaceted eyes where, and it's, it's a gesture you wouldn't necessarily expect because you see them as insectoid, but in that moment there's a gesture of, I did it, I saved you, and then it goes still. I try casting a level one healing word on it. Okay. At seven. Seven? There's no effect until one of its wings starts to flap slightly broken underneath it uh, and it starts to squirm. I, I, it is not looking good. Yep. It is on the verge of dying. Yep. But you held it there. Uh, I'll cast another... I'll cast a level five. Fuck it. <laughs> A good berry? I don't have a good berry. It's been 24 hours. It's all bad berries. <laughs> uh, it's three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. Okay. Um, it, with its its uh, sort of pincer arms, kind of pushes backward, and you look in somewhat of shock as its lower abdomen disconnects from it but it moves backward and it's one wing flops straight. The other one's still at a bit of an angle, kind of kind of trying to tentatively fly uh, as it crawls backward. It is a strange sight to behold this dissected Vespari, but it seems to be alive. Um, I apologize. Um, and it kind of rolls towards you, kind of crawls up to your legs. And then it gives you a hug along the legs. It's a very universal gesture. Mm -hmm. The two warriors that it, that it helped you, seeing that you seem to be down and not really caring a whit for the drone, fly off. The other two warriors, having seen that you've landed, also diverge. Um, yeah. I'm bad now. <laughs> uh, it is missing its, uh, its abdomen, which also has its lower legs, so it cannot walk. Mm -hmm. um, but it does seem to be able to, to somewhat kind of hop, skip, with the wings kind of blowing it a little bit and then landing, blowing it a little landing. Uh, okay. But it's staying with you. Um, I'll cast shit now. I have to do it as a ritual. Um, mm -hmm. But I cast moon, uh, moonbeam. <laughs> I want to finish it off. God damn it! <laughs> uh, what the hell? I cast moon with nature as a ritual. Okay, so you kind of yeah. relax yourself. Uh, it seems to be attentive to you and kind of yeah. uh, um, perching itself up on its legs, um, kind of looking over its shoulder at the the still bent other wing um, as you begin the ritual to reach out to the world around you. It takes 10, 11 minutes or 11 minutes, 11 yeah. minutes to cast as you reach out. You feel the ground beneath you. You feel the thick grass that is in this particular hollow, remembering that the, the, the jungle isn't as thick on the inside of this giant bowl that's of rock that's here. You can hear the sound still of the active hive, but it kind of fades away a little bit and becomes just another element of your surroundings. You can feel the trees and the animals, and now you start to pick out particular features. Yes, I am going to try to do uh, again plants, minerals, animals, or people uh, in the area. Okay. I did um, it before. I'm just trying to reorient myself. Yeah. Self, yeah. Basically. And what's the range? Uh, th three hundred feet. Okay. Or three miles. Sorry. Three miles. Okay. So most of the area around you'll be able to detect. Yeah. Um. So you, again, you're kind of touching in and, and noting the different. Uh, uh, flowers, some of the things you've talked about before, some of the things the alchemist in, in uh, the strange, I guess you want to call him an alchemist, uh, in uh, Port Al Alta had talked about wanting to get um, a few things. You note moon blossoms. You didn't really notice moon blossoms before. They are not in full bloom, of course, because it is the day. Uh, however, it will be raining tonight if the storm is any indication, so they will actually be uh, ripe for picking if you can get to them, but that's a couple of miles away. Um, you note 
a strange growth of plants thickening but being reinforced almost as though they found a source of uh, a wellspring of life um, but you notice that the animals are avoiding that particular area you notice uh, the uh, hive is again flush with activity um, on the lower levels you can sense uh, uh, the the other humans and humanoids that have been uh, cap captured or brought up into the into the hive, uh, all kind of gathering at lower levels, um, seemingly somewhat segregated into two different groups, a fairly large group and a fairly small group, uh, comparatively. So the smaller group is about a half a dozen, the larger group is about 40, in fact. You hadn't seen all of them before. There were more here than you'd realized. Um, as you extend your senses outward, um, you note all the, the moles and the smaller creatures that inhabit on this side of the bowl that didn't seem to make as much appearance on the other side. And then one particularly distinct um, humanoid form comes to you. Powerful. It's difficult to, to even pinpoint because it feels like a concentration of plants. It feels like a concentration of animals. It feels like all of that in one spot. And what's strange too is you note it noting you uh -oh. as you feel a sensation of awareness from it. It's about three miles away to the west. Yeah, no, sorry. sorry, two miles away to the west because three miles will take you out of the home. <laughs> it would be right on the line. Yeah. Uh -oh. Three miles away would be approximately where the tower was. What's that in kilometers? A lot. Two miles is 3.2 kilometers. Okay. Three miles is 4.8. Okay. Um, for the second one, any powerful celestial spay fiends, elementals, or undead? Yep. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the strange sensation you get, uh, again from that, that locus of power, um, is not only plant and animal, but celestial and fiend. All concentrated in a singular point. Um, at the center of a sort of swirling sen set of sensations. So it feels like a mix of the two, not too distinct? Yes. You also note around it Dozens of undead presences, some very, very large. Okay. And influences from other planes of existence. Hmm. Well, one in particular would be the very top of the nest, as the egg seems to pulse with otherworldly power. That would be it for here. Yeah. And you know you're too far away to sense Port Alta. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm going to pick up our drone and say, can you guide me back? <laughs> okay, and it kind of hovers and hangs around your shoulders and uses one arm to kind of indicate the right I'm direction. I'm going to pick up its lower body, too. Just yeah. Are you going to pick up the lower half? It's surprisingly light, um, and the bottom half is quite lifeless. Yeah. Um, it kind of looks down at it and kind of looks confused. Um, the goop can put it back together. As uh, he leads you over to the uh, the hive and looks up, and you can see there's an opening about a hundred feet up. Give me about an hour. <laughs> I just sit down and okay. start resting. Okay, it's sort of still hanging on to you. Yeah. I'm not really willing to let go. I take right. a short rest. <laughs> um. 
You hear the crackle of, thun of distant thunder, and there's a few spits of rain. Inside, you've been studying away at this thing. You're pretty sure you've cracked the code. Some of this doesn't make sense, and then you start to realize, no, these are deliberate errors. They wanted you not to know it. If you didn't know it, you wouldn't know it. That's what it's really all about. You're sure of it. Harry Salazar like. Now make your. Let me see. Intro. I don't know what the DC is. Hopefully it's uh, not too high. Because I'm assuming that this is. We're going to call this an inv investigation roll. Okay. It will still be a disadvantage because it is still a skill roll. Okay. All right. Twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Double seventeens. I yeah. will take that. So investigation. That's plus <laughs> science. Twenty-six. So lost in translation from double twenties to double seventeens. So that's still pretty good. Uh, I'll you take ha it. You Minus have indeed uh, cracked the code. Mm -hmm. Along the outside of each of the spigots, there appears to be uh, singular terms written on them. Um, some of them are rubbed pretty badly. So there's a. a a little bit of difficulty and you have to kind of scrape away at it. Mm -hmm. You find the metal is extraordinarily dense, so whatever this was was not carved into it. It was imprinted into it. Uh, you also notice that the metal is getting a little bit brittle around some of the spigots. Um, the ones that I will give you this at the moment um, that you can kind of see, the rest of them you kind of realize until this thing is active you won't actually see all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but they seem to be singular words. Uh, protect. Mm -hmm. Seal. Confuse. Imprison. Am I going too fast for you? Nope. Okay. Just a sec. Okay. Defend. Yep. Animate. Conceal okay. and recover. Those are the essences of what the meanings of those symbols are. Um, okay. And you feel that, and when they, you heard the term alembic, and it kind of clicks for you. This is essentially a uh, a chamber which can manipulate whatever's placed into it. Probably in this case, built to, to house a small chunk of the um, the star, uh, fallen star, whatever that happens to be. Um, it does require magic to activate, mm -hmm. um, but you're not entirely sure what level of magic would be required. It does appear that it does not activate from a single person. Can you or, like re repeat the last sentence? I was writing something. Uh, sure, so it does require magic to activate. Mm -hmm. um, you're not sure exactly the level of magic required or the complexity or the strength of magic required and it will not activate with a single person okay. it seems to be that there has to be from two different directions two simultaneous magical uh, invigorations Okay. and the idea seems to be that once the item is activated and filtering you can choose to open up uh, the appropriate uh, spigot attached to a uh, one of those terms to produce some effect. And there's only two spigots, right? No, there's, each of those has a separate spigot, and there's several others as well that seem to be much more broken. How many spigots total? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, looks like about twelve, so ten of them you've identified. Okay, so two more are not ident not identified. Right. Okay. I'll let my friends know this as soon as I get back. Okay. Well, the uh, Shank is there at the moment, uh, as is Iro. I will mentally ramble about my findings. Okay. Whether uh, they can make a sense of it, it's probably going to require a roll. <laughs> or should I do a? Uh, Communication, speaking, role. Shank looks like she's trying to decide whether she's tr supposed to listen to you or knock you unconscious. At this <laughs> that was a one. Uh, not quite, but almost. 
Um, she seems to err on the side of caution and not actually hit you upside the head, but she does tap on the lead. Is this thing still working? Yes, I'm making wonderful progress. Stop that. Do you actually understand anything you're saying right now? Yes. Yeah, I was afraid of that. What about Iroh? Uh, Iroh was just ignoring you. Uh, and then you kind of look over again and you realize she's probably asleep. She's still standing there with the glaive in hand, however. Okay. Protect, seal, confuse, imprison, defend, animate, conceal, recover. Okay, so do I have any idea like what these mean? So I'm assuming there needs Without to be it being active, there's no way to know. So to activate it, you need magic and you need two people. At least. And fuel. Star chunk. Probably. Okay. Upstairs, you've managed to arrange all of those items. You're taking your rest now. Yeah, I do the meditation for four hours, and then okay. for far as a of late it's work, I'll just basically start. Uh, uh, I'll take some of the stuff, put it in the bag of holding, and walk it down to him. Okay. Well. While you're doing your yep. while your rest, one of the nice things is it's extraordinarily quiet and dim here. It's actually pretty easy mm. to to meditate, depending on what Clark is doing. Uh, Clark is basically policing up all the weaponry and the armor that's usable. Okay. And trying to take it down to the able-bodied humanoids. Okay. You see, Amrun just sort of curl up and 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 uh, sit on the uh, money. Well, leave him be. <laughs> seems seems peaceful. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then he'll basically try to. Uh, ar arm and armor the 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 citizenry that aren't bug people. Okay. Um, you, it's not too hard to find your way back to the room where they are, mm -hmm. but you have no idea where the others are actually being held, and you don't see your drone anywhere. Right. Last you saw the drone, it went out to the ch queen's chamber with uh, uh, Elzera. Right. Okay. Well, in that case, maybe just uh, lay them out in such a fashion that could be. It can be mm. easily grabbed in a panic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amarun seems to be resting. Mm -hmm. uh, Clark will watch over him until it's time for his turn to rest. Okay. Yeah. Um, after about an hour, um, uh, Sara comes into the room. Uh, the elf you met before. Captain oh, hey, Sarah. you. Uh, hey, did you find anything in there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, come here, and I'll show the, the display. <laughs> We'd seen some of these things before, but we didn't dare take them. We figured the queen would probably notice, or... Well, being armed is not something that she stood for. Right, well, I suppose if you're defending the the hive, it would be allowed. At least uh, defending at least defending yourself would her, be sensible. Her Majesty Malafera said it would be alright, as long as we were loyal, and all of us are loyal, so it's not an issue. There you go. Uh, um, have at it. Sure, I'll get some of the... Wasn't there a drone with you? Busy, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, I will see if I can find uh, a drone then and help carry the stuff down. Cool. A few of the drones should be easily able to carry a few of these things. Alright. Um, are you... Is he resting? I'm pointing over at Emrude. Yeah, I'd, yep. leave, I'd leave him be if I were you. <laughs> Doesn't Thank you. look particularly comfy. Do you want something different? We can probably make something a little more comfortable for you. Nah, fine. I think we're good. I mean, you sure? Yeah. Because I, I remember sleeping on a bed and it was pretty nice. Um, I'm sure it's fine. All right. If you're sure there's nothing else I can get you. If there's anything else that you and your contingent need, uh, let me know. I'll see if I can help out. Well, if we could learn a little bit more, it'd be better. So far... I went back out with the scouting, and I couldn't find it again. Okay. It seems to have been completely obscured by the trees, and I didn't want to go any closer. Apparently, it's not good for your health. No. I, yeah. I know that they were drones, but I still feel bad for them. Do you, um, dear, dear people who serve the queen uh, know how to bear arms? Most of us do. Okay. Um, there was a, a couple of people who usually work below decks and weren't really called to fight, but I'm pretty sure we can convince them. Okay. Show them the right point and out anyway. Yeah. Well, that's probably all you're going to need anyway. I hope so. 
it comes to that. Uh, is there anything you want to tell us that I can maybe pass on when these people are not busy with their own affairs? Um, I mean, unless we know more, there's not much else that I can ask for. Okay. Uh, uh, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, you might want to uh, speak with your people and make sure that you're well... Uh, uh, what's the word? It's been a long time, sorry. Your, your, your food rations, you want to make sure that those are secure and you, you might be here for a while. Oh, well, so. the, the, wa the hive is mostly, Provisions. Is mostly lo closed up at the moment and there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of, well, you've had some of it, the, the jelly. There's a lot of that for you. Okay, well, just make sure it's at hand because you might be under siege for a while. Oh, I hadn't even thought of it like that. All right, I'll, I'll make sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <sighs> You know, there's only one thing I really miss. Getting out in the open sea. That's why I became a captain in the first place. Once this is over, maybe we can arrange something. Uh, I think my sailing days are behind me. And she doesn't look that old, and she's also an elf, so it's hard to tell. But she does sort of say it resignedly. Well, you've got a new state and a new leader who says that you'll uh, remain on the island uh, in their service. Maybe. Maybe. I'll go talk to the others. Rest up. It could be a bad day tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, she leaves. About a half an hour later, uh, five drones come in through the entrance from the Queen's uh, uh, chambers, actually, okay. uh, and start collecting the uh, the items. They look to you for direction in terms yep. of what to take. Here, 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 okay. This thing. okay. They all know what to do. Um, and, I mean, they don't seem to have any, they have no hands, so they're literally just sort of bundling it and holding it to themselves yeah. and flying off with it a few swords at a time and then go out through the Queen's area. Okay. Um, in that hour that passes, um, the drone has not moved. Yep. Uh, you're not really sure if it's sleeping. It's hard to tell. I get up, but I'm just kind of stretched, but... Uh, as soon okay. as you move, its wings sort of flutter a little bit. Okay, I'm like... What animals do I have? Ugh. Giant eagle seems a bit... How big is the drone? Now? Uh, about, uh, about two feet tall. Okay. Yeah. Small sized? It lost about three feet. Yeah, so you probably small size. Yeah, yeah. Like a halfling? It'd be, yeah, actually, it'd be, it's lighter than a halfling, actually. <laughs> it's it's sort of a quarterling now. <sighs> um. Sorry, we had to leave your butt behind. <laughs> it's right there. She didn't leave it behind. She actually picked it up and brought it with her. I actually true. did. Um, there's not really anything that I can carry. I turn into... I say, this might seem scary, but it's still me. It's the only way I can fly. And I turn into a giant eagle. Okay. Um, he flaps his wings madly to move back yeah. uh, as you start to sprout wings of your own and kind of hunch over into the eagle form. Um, you you get the impression, um, kind of just from an animalistic nature, that, it, that it's cautious about this, it doesn't really understand what this is, and also you appear to be a gigantic predator. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to crouch down and like kind of gesture it to get onto my back. Um, it, it very cautiously kind of crawls over and then you get this weird sensation of it putting its pincers in and kind of s s stepping between the feathers um, it is an insect crawling over you, and that is the feeling you're getting right now, yep. as it sort of nestles in on top of you, and then you feel the two uh, the two pointer arms just kind of grip in around your neck. Uh, and I'm going to fly back up to the queen's chamber. Okay. Um, the buddy on my back, because the rain is getting pretty heavy at this particular point. You can see flashes of thunder and lightning uh, illuminating the yep. area. Uh, I'm going dash. Okay. Because <laughs> 180 feet. Uh, okay. The, uh, the 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 wind is buffeting you a little bit, but nothing to hard to manage at this point. Yeah, uh, and you see several drones flying out of the queen's residence uh, with weapons, carrying them. And and I was helping Clark, um, so I go up basically, and I'm going to let him get off. Okay. Uh, and then he seems reluctant to get off, as if flying was fun. 
Um, how can I fit into the window? Or oh yeah, they're massive. They're massive. They're massive. Then I'm going to go in and. <laughs> I think the windows themselves were 20 feet wide. Yeah. And they were over about 100 feet tall. So. Cool. Um, uh, uh, so you can easily get fly in. Floof and then turn back into myself. Okay. Um. Yep, you become yourself again. You see the thing kind of crawling around uh, below you. Yeah. Um, you hear a voice from above. Um, I was wondering where you had gone to. You see Melophora standing on the upper balcony where the queen normally lives. Huh, yeah. Is um, everything all right? What happened to your drone? Um, we kind of fell out the window. And you can see the drone kind of lying down, almost in a groveling position. Um... Yeah. Workplace related incident. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of fell out the window. Aspire's comp. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, was this something you intended to do? Not really. But kind of. I just wasn't clear with what I meant. Mm, you'll have to forgive the drones. They are somewhat dim-witted. I mean... I will, I will uh, request another. We both survived, so... I will take him down below, or I have him taken down below. Okay, and I should like I make an insight check. Don't get him killed. That's a ten. That's a oh, ten. No. <laughs> um, the last time you were down below and you saw an injured Vespari, they were taking it apart. Drone bro, no. <laughs> There's no emotion in her voice whatsoever, as if it's a natural thing. I mean, he can stay with me. Why? He saved my life. If you insist, it makes no matter to me. Okay. I like kind of the blood a little bit. <laughs> you can't bring him back to Fator. You put him back together, though. Yeah, you would have had to leave the other, the bottom half of his body down there below. No. When you flew up. But technically, he's a living being. You might be able to reincarnate him. <laughs> Girl, we can make him a lower body, <laughs> goddammit. Um, is there we anything the else I can do for you? The storm seems to be getting bad. It does. Many um, of my patrols have come in. The, I figured out something that might be helpful, and I tell her what I figured out. With she flies down as you say that and gracefully um, stands before you. With the plant thing, I explain that. I do not know what this is. What manner of thing is this? I don't know. Usually, you feel either something is a, it's either a fiend or a celestial. It's either a, the hells or the heavens. I am not but familiar with these both. places. And that shouldn't happen. I see. And it's as confusing as what Amrun was feeling with his conversation with his god that it's both and that should not happen I see and that makes me feel uneasy still dangerous probably I've kept my patrols out of its range or out of the seeming range of it and some of the other two legs the no wings I do not know you people but they were clever with a tube and could see it at a distance. Yeah, well, those can be useful. Interesting. I will have to talk to them more about this. But they said it looked small and nothing threatening to me. What I saw was small, but it might have been something they sent to see what was going on. You it see. might not have been them. Oh, I see. Kind so of like you're selling, sending the drones out to see what's going on. But my drones are not capable of what this thing did. Exactly. I am afraid. I will see what I can do to encourage more warriors. Thank you, Elzera. I go back into the treasure room because I know okay. they're in there. Uh, and she flies out the window, kind of down. You suspect to go speak to people. Um, you see Clark just sitting there, I guess. Um, kind of. On watch. Relaxing. Clark, sleep. I'll take. Okay. A bit of a watch. Uh, Clark will find the bedroll he's got in his pack and 
lay it out. And okay. You see, uh, on the other side of the room, you see, perched atop the money, is uh, Amrun doing his normal that seems, pose. You know, weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> money. I don't know. If I said money, I'd be pretty comfy. <laughs> All right, so you're standing watch? Yeah. Okay. Um, a drone comes in, um, stands there, looks at you expectantly, as the other small half drone is still kind of holding onto you. Uh, we're going to stay here for a little bit. Okay. It stands there impassively. Yep. Um, I'm not asking anything of them anymore. <laughs> uh, it seems a little bit larger than the drone that you had with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you recall that the request for the drone originally was summoned to be a messenger, which means he was probably very fast, but he was not very strong. This one seems to be a little bit larger, a little bit stronger. They learn. <laughs> um, downstairs, mm -hmm. what are you doing? No one seems to have returned. I've cracked the code. I'm going to go up. Did I hear where they were going? No. I'll go to the queen. Um, that involves going through the room we're in. The, uh, okay, uh, good. Well, the reaction from Shank is, you're doing what now? I think you need to rest. Yes, I, I, I've already rested. Yesterday, I figured it out. I need to talk to my companions. I don't know if I'd call that rest, but I guess... I'm feeling fine. You look in any case, I need... You look terrible. <laughs> Enough of your judgment. Uh, I just need to speak to Amrun or somebody, even Elzara, somebody who can use magic. We can activate this artifact. It, it, it can help us. Uh, now? Soon. I at least need to convey my findings. And I'll look at my notebook, and it's probably like all like. Yeah, you, it looks great to you, but she's not having it. First of all, she's not. I don't think she's trained in Arcana. Uh, she's not. Uh, so first of all, it would be kind of scribbles, even if it didn't look like scribbles. Uh, but it makes perfect sense to you. Yeah. So w what's what's her face looking like? Uh, maybe you need to lie down for a while. You just don't understand magic. Yeah, I don't want to. It's all very strange, and I'm not wanting any part of it if I we can. We are each entitled to our own opinions, but I need to talk to Emma or Elzara or the Queen as quickly as possible. Okay, why don't you stay here? Uh, and if you could fetch them for me, that would be appreciated. Uh, Centaur? Iro? Iro, Iro kind of uh, blinks her eyes open. She might be sleeping. Um, well, okay. well, uh, you pissed her off that night. And she just sort of an doesn't answer at all, but the eyes are wide open. She's sleeping. I'm going to go find the others. Just make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Find them in a timely manner, otherwise I'm flying up to wherever they are. Uh, Iro I, I sort of looks you up and down. He will not leave the room. I, I can't fly, though. You, you saw me. Uh, Iro did not. Yesterday? The day, the day before? <laughs> Iro was stuck in the tunnel down Shank below. Did, but Iro didn't see uh, me. Just don't... Just make sure he doesn't fly anywhere. I will. And I, uh, Shank leaves the room. Iro moves in front of the door, <laughs> places the, the glaive once more, and he's just staring at you. <laughs> I'll stare back. <laughs> Make a uh, contested wisdom uh, roll. Well, I rolled a three, so that's a five total. <laughs> okay. She actually didn't do much better. Um, she ends up blinking just after you do and yawning slightly. So, uh, are you enjoying this hive? I thought no. it was kind of terrible at first, but I'm slowly getting used to it. I do not like these heights. And these cramped quarters. And there's too much water around this place. What, over 100 feet in the air? No, this, the larger water, the lake that surrounds yes. this. It the is ocean. too big. I'm not familiar with that word. If you keep traveling with us, you will be back. Amarun seems to have a thing for water now. He is a strange one. <laughs> well, that that's one thing we can both agree on. Have he you does. learned much from him yet? Mostly, I suppose. So you are one of his disciples? Not quite. I have access to his temples. Hmm. I, I don't know if this makes me Saint Zacchaeus, but... Can you take this off? I can. 
Please. I don't know if I should. Of course you should. I mean, I mean, Shank didn't tell you to not take it off. She just told you to make sure I didn't leave this room. You are not familiar with my people, but we are made to be independent. I do not need Shank to tell me everything I need to do. Well, or everything you need to not do. I, I'm not very familiar with the people. I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but the only familiarity I have with your people is that they mug others and take their things. I mean, I believe we've met before. In fact, I remember the lightning bolt. It, it hit me right here when you guys left the last time. I remember. Yes. I'm sure you will. You were trespassing. Trespassing. We were traveling. That's not the same thing. You did not seek our permission to use the road. Is there a form we have to apply ahead of time? We have to write and send it ahead of time? I would gladly do so. Just give me the form and I'll have, I'll have it added to the library. A form? <laughs> yes. Paper? Yes. The, Paper holds the, a little weight. The thing we write things on. It is mostly useless. Oh, them fighting words. Yeah. <laughs> Paper holds knowledge. Are you not after knowledge? We are. I believe we... Our knowledge lives, not in books. It is not dead like yours. Well, dead knowledge, as you call it, can still be useful. Only knowledge that is useful is living. But with the dead knowledge, as you call it... Let's say you find a book. It's been dead for 10, 20, 100,000 years. But once you read it, it becomes alive again. It's the like... The tender of that book failed. That knowledge was, was left to lie and die. That is and a failure. become reborn in a different age. Most knowledge read in books is false. Which evidence do you have to confirm this? It is how we know things. Right, just like how you mug people on the highway, but... We're both after knowledge. Our methods are different, but... If, sh if the Shadow Speaker tribe doesn't write things down, how do you pass on the knowledge without forgetting any of it? Our knowledge lives with each of us. With every generation, we are all taught the knowledge. Every and single... And we, we tap into the very land, the spirits of the wind. What knowledge does that give you? Not All yourself. knowledge of our history, of our ancestry. We know things you could never imagine. Really? Try me. I am not a keeper of the knowledge. I merely partake when I need to. What are these keepers of knowledge? They are the leaders. Yeah. They are the great speakers and the great listeners. They hear upon the winds the stories of all other lands. And they throw out what they do not need. They throw it out without even writing it down? It that makes it dead. And we do not truck in dead, long, dead knowledge. But it could be useful to somebody else. Of a different... But not us. If we feel that we might pass that knowledge on to others, then maybe we will hold it within our memory. But why bother? Just a more educated world would make a better world. No, it does not. Why do you say that? Knowledge is the wind. You may dip into it. You may be part of it for a time. But you cannot hold all the wind. It would be pointless to even try. So you steer to the parts which help you. And you avoid the parts which are useless. You let them pass on. Others may find that knowledge. That is what they needed. I understand your point of view. I just... If you write it down, if it becomes stored, or temporarily dead, and becomes of use to somebody else, then you've helped somebody else out. I do not need to help anyone else out. Isn't that... Doesn't that go against the teachings of Polexia? I do not know yet. I am still trying to understand them. Amrun Elisar is not forthcoming in many lessons. No, oh, I... He does speak in special ways, but he does have a good heart. From what I understand, 
this being Paluxia helps those who are part of her tribe. Mm -hmm. So I in turn help those who are part of uh, the tribe. And those I help become part of the tribe. Do you consider me part of your tribe now? I do not know yet. You may be part of my needs for now. Yes. A temporary tribe. There are names for it, but that will do for now. But we can discuss the living and dead knowledges later on. I just... Everyone helps people in a certain way. He gives them life. I want to give people knowledge. It's just helping out in a different way. And I, I also see. like to acquire knowledge. As do you. So I believe we do have that in common. Perhaps. I will think on these things. Same. You should rest. Yes, I... I yeah, I should. <laughs> I'll just pull up a book and it's like... That conversation was his point of view on it. From Ira's point of view, it's like... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yes, she maintained yes. a lot of calm <laughs> during that. And I was like, no, I'm going to give that away, but yes. Uh, very much... Uh, can she, I make a sanity roll? <laughs> uh, you can make a wisdom save. But uh, she hasn't taken the helmet off. She has not. Is it going to be another, an, an extra level of exhaustion? Or is it just like babbling? 13 plus 2, so 5. At disadvantage. At disadvantage. Mm -hmm. It's a problem with exhaustion. 15. 15? You feel yourself kind of pulling together. Um, and some of the speech that you had there uh, did come across clearly. You had to speak a little slower. You had to really concentrate. Um, especially because even the thought of taking the, the helmet off almost draws in the, the buzzing of the hum once more. Um, but she seems to have been considering what you were thinking okay. and considering your words. So we actually had a conversation and like somewhat discussed without coming to angry swear words. It's true. That's pretty good. It's true. Like, I'll, I'll give myself a pat on the back <laughs> that's, for that. That's, that's an improvement. <laughs> I'd, like from to point out the, <laughs> I'd like to point out the amount of times that you've called El Zero a racist. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, going to sleep that night? Has Shank ever come back with my companions by any chance? Or <laughs> oh, right. right. Shank did leave. Um... Actually, when Shank gets up there, you'd be the one on on, on uh, watch. Yeah. Uh, and Shank kind of comes in, uh, not exactly quietly. Um, oh, actually, I think the armor's good for that. Uh, I don't remember if she's got that or not. No, she's not trained stealth, so she's not really trying to hide Go anyone. Uh, as she kind of comes up through the, the same hole in the floor. Uh, Zaka seems to be figuring something out. Mm -hmm. He said he had figured out the, what's it, the ball with the pointy spikes. Yeah. And he wanted to tell everybody about it right now, but I told him to wait. I don't know if he's I'm actually going to wait. I'm not them, so. I can wait here if you want to go down. Do I really, though? I honestly <laughs> can't answer that for you. And, But maybe you can go down, and I can stay here. And there's a bit of desperation because you realize that she has been taking care of him for a day and how. And yeah. wow. Zacchaeus, Zara, and Iro in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zacchaeus and Iro have reached kind of an understanding, but I'll, I guess Alzer doesn't know that. There's a loud strike of thunder not far away from you. You feel the hive shake. Uh, for you, uh, Amrun, you would actually be a con conscious of that mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, uh, you can make a uh, perception check at disadvantage. Sure. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Twenty-one. 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 Tw
Uh, you don't really hear the thunder where you are. You feel the whole building shift. Um. You're exhausted. How long? You're probably not waking mm-hmm. up for How long was that? I get all my spell slots back. Uh, it's been about. We don't know that. Three hours and you've got into three that. Three levels of exhaustion. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I'm gonna so like get up and check, like, <laughs> go look out a window. Okay. So you're going into the queen's chamber. I'll knock. Okay. Um, there's no answer on the other door. It's really quite far away from anything. Yeah. Uh, I'll, like, uh-huh. knock the again, like, kind of push it in. Okay. No? There's a bright light behind the door. And as you look in, you see a figure standing on the balcony. Small, green, waifish female figure. It appears to be almost like a, uh, a dryad, if you had to peg it from this distance. Um, green hair, uh, uh, green skin, uh, clothing which is ragged, um, lightning crashing behind her uh, outside as she walks calmly in. You can see Melifora, uh stand up above. Uh, you can hear now the, st- the sound of uh, droning wings. Uh, there are four uh, guards in the room, four warriors in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, they immediately move over uh, and stop uh, as the small figure raises its hand. I wish only to speak to the pretender and his cohorts. And it's seven o'clock. And I'm going to end a little bit early tonight. I think that's a nice little spot to end on. We got a little bit away from a few things, but I think there's some interesting stuff in there. Did he at least get a chance to identify some stuff? Uh, when? Where? No one took any stuff down to him. Certain death? No, no, just wait a sec. I'm identifying shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but who is the pretender? Is it tech? So that'll be. No, I'm pretty sure it's me. It for right. the moment. I want to thank you all for coming and playing. A little bit of a shorter session tonight. But well, it was a stressful one. I think that there were some interesting stressful endings. moments. There's a, I like cliffhanger endings. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where we pick up from there. We'll have another session next week. The week after that, I will be absent, so there will be a gap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think we'll pick up pretty much regularly after that until September, I think, is the next, the next likelihood. But um, I want to thank you guys for playing. Thank you guys mm-hmm. for watching at home. Uh, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can always leave them with the videos themselves. You can also go to our Facebook page, Legends of the Drowned Isles. Uh, if you want to be part of a group of uh, the audience that gets a chance to ch- chat with each other, we also have Watchers of the Drowned Isles, which is meant to be a chat space for everybody to get together, share your theories. Uh, you know what? We'd love to see some artwork if anybody wants to do some to illustrate some of this stuff. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I've gotten some professionally done that's on the Watchers page, and I love it. Very cool. So. Uh, and let others know if you're having fun. Um, and, you know, go ahead and point out the mistakes I made, because I probably made quite a few. All right, folks, uh, that's it for tonight. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye.